for Steve Nash. Head coach of the Phoenix Suns, Mike D'Antoni. And I'm sure he enjoys the battle of contrasting and conflicting styles. The Suns with the wide open, freewheeling approach, letting the players play versus the Knicks. Everything orchestrated by their head coach, Larry Brown. Let's take a look at the Knicks starting lineup here tonight against the Suns. It's the same starting lineup they had in their last game against Milwaukee, and we should alert the media to that fact because Dan Marley, they've had 19 different starting lineups already this season in 28 games. It's Marbury and the rookie, Nate Robinson, in the backcourt. The veteran Antonio Davis, along with rookie David Lee at the forward spots, and Eddie Curry, the center for head coach Larry Brown, a native New Yorker, grew up in Brooklyn, but enduring a very rough homecoming here in his first season with New York Knicks, 65-year-old Larry Brown. So we take a look at tonight's AutoZone matchup, and we have an interesting one here from New York. Kurt Thomas and Stephon Marbury, a bit of a dicey relationship, Dan. New York Daily News, last February 4th, Kurt said during the game, Steph, everyone in this organization is afraid of you. I'm not, and I will beat your butt. Well, Kurt now can beat his butt playing for the Phoenix Suns. Yeah, and I believe Kurt Thomas, but, uh, you know, Stefan was very aggressive in the game in Phoenix, came out looking to shoot, played well. I expect him to be aggressive again here tonight, playing against Phoenix. And as a player, Kurt Thomas coming back to New York, I'm sure he's very amped up, wants to have a very good game here in the Garden. Marbury did have that big game in Phoenix, scoring the 28 points. A loss, though, for the Knicks. And going back to all the starting lineups for Larry Brown, boy, he plays some mind games with his players. The 19 different starting lineups, Dan, 10 different players have found themselves on the inactive list from game to game. So they're not sure whether they're going to suit up that particular evening. Well, the only thing I don't agree with them in this lineup is I put Channing Fry in there. I mean, your team is 7-21. to 21. I think they're young players. Robinson, Fry, David Lee are going to be good players. I throw Fry in there. Why not with the record they got? Throw your young guys in, especially a guy like Fry who's had such a good year. Up, up, and away from New York City. Game five on the road trip for the Suns. Officials tonight, Tom Washington, Tim Donahue, and Robbie Robinson. Rajavel kicks it over to Marion. Going deep for three. Straight and sweet for Sean Marion to begin things here in New York. Well, very nice. You always like Sean to start off with that three and get aggressive and knock it down. Suns again spreading the floor while Raja Bell comes off the screen and hits Sean, Sean with a wide open shot. And Marion in the zone with AutoZone. $100 to Phoenix Suns charities after the three-pointer pumped in by the Matrix. Now defensively on the rookie, David Lee coming out of Florida. Spent four seasons there with the Gators. 6'9", 235. And the fans here in New York love his hustle. Well, Sean with a smile as he ran down the floor knowing he played good defense. Felt that Lee got a little lucky throwing that off the glass. Marion now in the corner in the face of Lee. Back iron and Nash tips it out now to the one-time Nick, Kurt Thomas. Spent seven seasons here in New York, and during the course of those seven seasons, Kurt Thomas missed only seven games. Ball goes out of bounds, and Phoenix will still have it, leading 3-2 here, one minute deep into the opening quarter. Suns now 9-4 and four on the road trip after taking the first four on this swing. Nash swings it over to Kurt Thomas. Front iron, rebounded there by David Lee into the hands of Stefan Marbury. Marbury comes in leading the team in scoring 18 points per game, dishing out six assists. And there is Eddie Curry coming up short. Well, a good ball move by the Knicks. Curry positioned himself well in the paint, just missed the chippy. We talked about the Knicks suspending Jerome James, the center that they signed as a free agent out of Seattle. Raja Bell for three. Couldn't find the mark, and then Marion taps it out to Nash. He'll fire up a three-pointer. That one won't drop as well. And scrapping for the board, Roger Bell. New York will have it. But Larry Brown, Isaiah Thomas, and the Knicks suspending Jerome James, signed as a free agent out of Seattle. He's been suspended indefinitely because, according to Larry Brown, he was unprepared to practice yesterday. Well, it's not hard to read between the lines on that one. No, <laughs> pretty clear. Jerome James, by the way, uh, during his days in Seattle, once actually fell asleep during a film session with the Sonics. So he has a bit of a history. Robinson, touch pass in the corner to David Lee, and the southpaw hits the two. Oh, well, there you see the rookie first getting the ball inside, making a nice move, and then stepping out, the left-handed drills a jump shot. And then Nate Robinson hits the floor in the backcourt, and an offensive foul on Phoenix, so... Nate Robinson forcing the turnover, but a little worse for the wear there. Nate Robinson, what a phenomenal athlete he is. 43 and a half inch vertical jump. He actually tried out in Phoenix before the draft in front of Suns head coach Mike D'Antoni, Brian Colangelo, the Suns brass. And 
apparently he took off just in front of the free throw line, had an amazing dunk. This is quite an athlete, Nate Robinson. Gets the start here tonight for his head coach, Larry Brown, who doesn't always like to start, much less play rookies. Traveling violation there on Marion. Well, good idea by Sean, just a little bit too quick. Fake like he's going to take the jump shot, got caught for travel. Knicks come in, they've lost 10 of their last 11 games, their only win during that stretch. A victory here at home over the Utah Jazz on December 23rd. Inside, Davis rejected from behind by Kirk Thomas, and saved there by Boris Diaw. Well, we're getting used to this by the Phoenix Suns. Good team defense, Kirk Thomas coming to the free throw line, gets up and blocks a shot. And then a foul underneath the Suns, who? And the Suns will have it on the side. You're going to see here, it's Antonio Davis gets great position on Diaw. And Kurt Thomas from the weak side gets it from behind. Good defense by Kurt. Dan, are you and I the only guys in this gym? So far. Are the players? <laughs> it is very quiet here at Madison Square Garden. Not a whole lot to cheer about for these New York fans so far this season. Suns begin the evening one of six. Frigid shooting for the Suns here in the opening quarter. They've already put up four three-pointers. Six field goal attempts, four have been behind the line. Powering inside the veteran, Antonio Davis, in his 13th year out of UTEP. Well, that's a tough cover for Sean Antonio Davis. Got Sean underneath the basket, used to use his strength there and turned around and nailed it. So the Suns are going to have to come down to double team on that as Kurt Thomas steps back and, like you said, have not been able to find the mark here early. And that's their last six shots. They scored on the opening possession, the three-pointer by Sean Marion. And Marbury blasting in. One of the notes on the Suns chalkboard in the locker room was to try to prohibit Stefan Marbury from getting three passes into the lane. Boris Diaw, and he can't find the range as well. Everybody on the Suns team throwing up blanks. Could be a tired group, this Suns squad. At least if they're like a couple of the broadcasters, producer, director, a lot of people dragging after nine days on the road. Davis drops the shoulder, baby hook over Boris Diaw. And the New York Knicks jump out to the seven point lead. They're on a 10-0 run after that Marion three. Inside of eight minutes to go, Diaw from the outside. Suns living by the perimeter right now here in the opening period. Well, you're right, the Knicks getting all their buckets inside. Power game, Suns coming down and taking jumpers, aren't able to hit them. And they're going to have to go down and double team these guys. And as you see, Nate Robinson gets all the way to the bucket, but unable to finish. Here come the Suns. Fast break opportunity. Raja to Marion. Elevates and detonates. Sean Marion with all five Suns points. And that's more like it. The Suns getting the rebound and pushing the ball. Sean Marion, great at running the floor, gets an easy bucket. And that was one of the other keys, too, for the Suns in the locker room and talking to their players was to take the ball to the basket. The Knicks are number one in fouls committed per game. David Lee. Strokes it from the outside, another two-pointer for David Lee. Comes in, averaging only three points per game in 12 minutes of play. But for the second straight evening for the Knicks, gets the start from Larry Brown. Nash two-man game, Kurt Thomas nearly went up and down, throws it away into the hands of Lee. Driving on Marion with the left hand, into the line will go a very active David Lee, and the Knicks leading by seven. Well, this is what you want to do as a rookie, you get it chance to start. David Lee making the most of it here, being aggressive offensively there, getting the steal on the weak side and goes all the way to the basket. followed by Sean Marion. Against the Milwaukee Bucks, David Lee in a starting role. Jerked down 12 rebounds in the game against Milwaukee, but again for the Knicks it was another loss. That was their last game Friday in Milwaukee against the Bucks. They fall 113 to 108, and Jamal Crawford after that game saying, I was awful down the stretch. Bad shots, turnovers. He felt he was one of the causes for that loss against the Bucks. And the Knicks have really been struggling defensively over the last nine games, allowing 107 points per game. You think that would play right into the Suns' hands here tonight. Marion from Nash, and Marion pops it in again. Another three-pointer for Sean Marion, who has scored all eight Suns' points. Knicks 13, Sean 8. Well, it's not like New York's playing good defense. Phoenix has gotten wide open jumpers, just haven't been able to knock them down. Sean's the only guy that's found the range so far. Another $100 to Phoenix Suns Charities from AutoZone. Marbury defended by Raja Bell. That'll be the matchup to watch here tonight. What a strong move by Marbury. Shook Raja Bell, got to the basket, caused some contact, banked it in, and that's why he's one of the most talented point guards in the league. Dan, you talked about Marbury. And 
He's had his difficulties so far adjusting to his new head coach, Larry Brown. And the game against Orlando went 0 for 7 from the field. And again, had a meeting with Larry Brown this past weekend as they try to iron out their differences. And Steph responded positively, though, following that game against the Magic. Came back with 23 points and 12 assists against the Bucks. But this could be a season-long struggle for Marbury and his coach Larry Brown. And, of course, well-documented their differences uh, during the Olympics a couple summers ago. Sean Marion straight and sweet from the outside. Sean Marion now four of five shooting already in double figures, all ten Suns points. Well, thank goodness for Sean Marion here in the first quarter. Larry Brown's going to get a timeout and say, guys, listen, guard number 31, the only guy that's shown up here early for the Suns. The guy has been an absolute superstar on this road trip for the Suns, averaging 25 points, shooting 67% from the field. Sean Marion still sizzling. The Matrix premiering here in the Got it. Fifteen to ten Knicks here in the opening quarter. Check out special offers on Southwest.com for the latest and greatest in air, car, and hotel deals. Dan Marley, Sean Marion hit a three-pointer to begin the game for the Phoenix Suns. The team then missed eight straight. Sean Marion comes back and hits three more for Phoenix. Well, Sean has really showed up. First running the floor, you talked about hitting threes and then getting down the floor and Able to hit that mid-range jumper last time. So Sean has scored all 10 points. And thank goodness for the Matrix here early. For the Knicks, it's been David Lee has the ball right now, has seven points here in the opening period. Now posting up James Jones as Junior comes in during that timeout for Phoenix. Lee, right-handed hook. He is ambidextrous. You'll see him shoot left-handed and right-handed. Going back to high school, he actually broke his left arm and then learned how to shoot right-handed. I've cut my right arm off to be am amphibious. I mean, amphibious. <laughs> amphibious. Amphibious. <laughs> <laughs> amphibious? Huh? You said that? Checkford? <laughs> I believe I'm so. amphibious? <laughs> but a natural lefty, David Lee. And uh, he has some skills. They, uh, the fans wanted to see more of David Lee as his team continued to struggle here with their seven wins in 28 games. Marbury looked like he initiated the contact with his former teammate, and it's an offensive foul. Kurt Thomas taking the charge. Well, that was weird there. One ref raised his hand and then looked at the other ref, and they both kind of just stared at him for a second, and then finally the lead official called charge on Stefan, much to the chagrin of Larry Brown and Stefan Marbury. But you know New York's going to be aggressive. They go to the line, the average going to the line 31 times a night, which is number one in the league. So they're going to try to get to the bucket. Sun wanting to play good defense, but not foul this next team for that very fact. Marbury stealing it away from Nash, who then shoves off and is busted for the personal foul. Well, Steph Stefan sunk back down. Steve didn't see him hit the ball away, and then Nash trying to get it back. You can see Stefan from the backside, and then. Nash grabs him, gets caught for the foul. Uh, you remember that game in Chicago, New Year's Eve, too. Steve Nash had seven assists in the opening quarter. Then he jammed his hand up against Luol Deng, and that took some of Steve's game away from him offensively and distributing-wise. Finished, though, with uh, ten assists on the evening. Eddie Curry acquired in the sign-and-trade deal with the Chicago Bulls. Had the heart irregularities at the end of last season with Chicago. Missed the final 13 games and then the playoffs. Then, of course, during the offseason, he refused to take a DNA test, so the Bulls would not re-sign him and keep him on their roster, instead shipping him to New York. Marion from the outside, back iron, Nash keeping it alive. Back to Marion, 15-footer, high archer. Boarded there by Eddie Curry. But I can tell you, after watching the Chicago Bulls on New Year's Eve, they sure miss Eddie Curry's size. The steal by James Jones in the contact in the backcourt, foul on Nate Robinson. Well, Stefan tried to hit a streaking David Lee for the lob, and a good job by James Jones is getting up and intercepting that, getting it to Nash, and Nate Robinson came from the weak side, got caught for the foul. First look tonight at the howitzer, Eddie House checking in off the Suns' pine. This here, Stefan trying to hit David Lee, and James Jones with those long arms goes up and gets it, and Robinson gets caught for the infraction. Let's see if House can get hot here in the garden. I'm sure the people here would love to see an exhibition by the howitzer. You know, I asked Eddie House, what's your favorite spot on the court? Do you have a favorite spot? He said, it's as soon as right he walks on, eggs. probably. Did you listen? No, I didn't. You were listening to our conversation. But I had the same thing. Eh? A shooter with range, it doesn't matter. As soon as you get in between the white lines, you're ready to fire. You're eavesdropping. No, just, it's that shooter's mentality. I know you're kind you of a it. big deal, Tom, but I don't listen to your conversations. <laughs> I've got better things to do, pal. <laughs> 
Seven point lead for New York, and there is the howitzer. Eddie House pumping it in from the outside. You and you and House are not two rocket scientists. I'm not going to sit there and be enthralled by your really? conversation. Wow. Well, we are certainly going to dial you out of our <laughs> future talks. Five point lead now. Jamal Crawford out there for the Knicks. And here comes New York. Also checking in Quintel Woods for Larry Brown and New York. James Jones off the mark. Boris Diaw crashing the offensive glass, but it's tipped out of there by Eddie Curry. Now it's David Lee giving it a home in transition for the Knicks. Well, that's one thing that kid can do. I remember watching him in the slam dunk contest when he came out of Florida winning that contest, so very athletic. Somewhat surprised to see Quintel Woods checking in, the 24-year-old who was signed in early December as a free agent. Boris Diaw, bucket and one for Phoenix. Well, good job there by Boris. Looked up and saw Eddie Curry on him. Just one hard dribble to his right, blew by the big man, laying it in off the glass. He just squaring up Eddie Curry, and all it took was one hard dribble to the right. David Lee with the reach there. Nobody there, and Diaw just lays it in. And that's what you like out of Diaw, being very aggressive. You look at the uh, Suns starting forwards too. Boris Diaw shooting 50% from the field. Sean Marion this season 51% so far from the field. That's a career high for Marion. So excellent production from the Suns starting forwards. Quintel Woods bouncing in, drawing the contact and a ticket to the line. So again, Quintel Woods seeing some playing time. 6'8", 220 in his fourth season. He was waived by the Boston Celtics coming out of the preseason. He was previously seen some time with Portland and Miami, but a guy who's had some off-the-court issues. storied past. Mm -hmm. Just say uh, he owned some dogs there in Portland and found himself in some trouble. 19-15, Knicks, 3.09 to go here in the first quarter. So Quintel Woods out there along with Channing Fry coming off the bench. Channing Fry winning that state title at St. Mary's and then on to the U of A with Lute Olsen and the Wildcats and having a tremendous rookie season. It's Channing Fry now defensively on Nash. Pulls back, fires right in the mug of Fry. Yeah, the run rookie year. Fry didn't know what to do. Saw Nash there backed up, didn't want to get beat to the basket. Nash just pulled up and hit the jump shot. Channing Fry comes in second among rookies in scoring behind only Chris Paul of the Hornets, and he's second among rookies in rebounding behind Andrew Bogut. There is Channing Fry with a running right-handed hook. You can see the Knicks game plan. They're being very aggressive, just putting their heads down to get into the hole, and that time Fry picked up the loose ball and took it hard to the basket. Nash, spoon-feeding Diaw, pump fakes on Fry, and rebounded there by Quintel Woods. So a pretty athletic squad out there on the floor now for Larry Brown. And it's Woods, knifing in, and an offensive foul drawn there by James Jones, who so already is a steal here in the opening quarter. And we have a timeout with the Knicks leading the Suns here in the opening period, 22-17. You are watching Phoenix Suns Basketball on UPN 45. New York Knicks shooting 67% from the field here in the opening quarter. Lead the Suns by five, and now you have 49 million reasons to play Powerball. Wednesday's jackpot, an estimated $49 million. Get your tickets today, and don't forget to check for the winning numbers at ArizonaLottery.com. Now it's time for tonight's Powerball Power Play. That man, Channing Fry, we take you back to his high school years at St. Mary's with the Knights, where, as I told you, they won an Arizona State Hoops title. Abusing. Brophy of all teams. What are they? What are the highlights are these? Brophy soft. Get out of these highlights. Soft. A lifelong Phoenix Suns fan, Channing Fry, who lived in Chandler, and of course, uh, one of the more intelligent two. guys yeah, I've ever you know met where because I'm going. one of his favorite yeah. players, none other than Elliot Perry. Thunder. I know Elliot, Elliot Perry. Sox and Thunder. <laughs> Channing Fry going after Steve Nash. Am I there. talking about myself in the third person? Oh, yeah. <laughs> who am I? Pat Doyle? <laughs> Nash will head to the line to shoot two. Uh, Channing Fry had a great story too. Uh, New York Papers here. They they asked him about what was the first car you you got. And he said, "Well, it was a 1971 pickup truck that he had to drive from uh, from Chandler to St. Mary's High School on a 20 minute drive, and the the truck didn't have air conditioning. Yeah, that was a tough drive. No way, <laughs> no AC. He said he couldn't put on his." Uh, his jersey because it would just be sweated through before he even got to school. I think he can afford a little That's bit right. better car at this point. I had to walk uphill three miles both ways in the snow. Keep your ice skates on. 
Mo Taylor has checked in now for Larry Brown and the Knicks. Size advantage there on Boris Diaw, but it pops out. Marion tips it over to James Jones. Looks up ahead to Eddie House, hesitated. He's going to hand it off to Nash, and now it's Quintel Woods, but he can't make the Suns pay. Another rebound, though, by James Jones. And now it's Eddie House going deep for three. Absolutely! To the howitzer, Eddie House in the zone with AutoZone. $100 to Phoenix Suns Charities. Well, Phoenix pushing the ball, and House continues to be on fire. The Suns got to do a better job protecting the ball. New York's being very aggressive trying to get some steals. Suns third made three-pointer here in the opening quarter. Marbury now defensively. It's Steve Nash, hand in the face of Marbury. Offensive rebound, Fry. Throws it off the glass with a foul there on Boris Dial. We'll send Channing Fry to the strike. 103 to go here in the opening quarter. Here's Stefan going to go up that mid-range jumper. Channing Fry, nobody gets a body on him. Goes up and gets a contact, contact on Dial. First meeting between the Suns and the Knicks back in New York as Fry misses the first free throw. Suns won at 85 to 81. Channing Fry though struggled four of 19 from the field. 19 field goal attempts. Time and time again, he was going after Sean Marion there in the low block. And tonight's game brought to you by Southwest Airlines, official airline of the NBA. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of freedom. Marbury tracking Nash, now it's House to Diaw, pitching back out to Eddie House, front iron, rebounded there by Quintel Woods. No questioning the athletic skills and the talent of Quintel Woods. Mo Taylor now, low block, again he's got Boris Diaw on him, so James Jones runs at Mo Taylor with a double. They reset low block Channing Fry against two defenders and it falls for the rookie Channing Fry who had a 30-point game earlier this season against the Bucks. Good move there by Fry. Turned away from the double team. You see the pass in from Stefan. Turns away from the double team. Little baby right-handed hook got bumped down low below the waist, is able to knock it in and goes to the free throw line. And maybe with that move, you can see why Stefan Marbury earlier this season compared Channing Fry to a young Tim Duncan. Channing Fry responded, ah, it's a little lofty right now. Lofting it up, Nash to Boris Diaw for the crush. And it's a two-point game here, final 20 seconds of the opening quarter. Steve Nash now, four assists. Again, the Suns led by Sean Marion, who scored their first 10 points of this quarter. Marbury now hands it off to Jamal Crawford. Defended by Diaw, five seconds, four seconds. Crawford, it's straight and sweet for Jamal Crawford. Final three seconds of the opening period. Nash ahead to House. Can he get it off? The buzzer sounds, and we are done with one here in New York. David Lee leading the way for the New York Knicks. He had nine in the period. Marion has ten. And we head to the second quarter here from Madison Square Garden as the Suns look to go 5-0 and on this road trip. You are watching Phoenix Suns basketball on UPN 45, Knicks 27, Suns 23. Start of the second quarter here in New York. Knicks leading the Suns 27-23. Tom Leander back with Dan Marley and Suns president Brian Colangelo as Stefan Marbury pumps it in from the outside. And Brian, thanks for joining us here at the Garden. You bet. Went thanks. to college at Cornell up there in Ithaca, upstate New York, and then spent, what, four years here in the New York area. As Eddie House unloads for two more. I'll tell you, Tom, uh, you know, not often do you get a better seat than I do, but uh, <laughs> this is uh, an improvement. And, you're not even paying the $2,000 a night that it costs to sit here. And it's a great country. You're okay. usually in the tunnel there at the America West Arena. Yeah, actually, I've been sitting up in the stands, right. yeah, right. hiding out. But uh, I don't like the starts that we get off to when I agree to come and uh, sit next to you. Ah, uh, that's all right. 29-25, it's still tight. It was ugly early, but the Suns responded thanks to Sean Marion scoring the first 10. But talk about this road trip. Suns win the first four. What does it mean? You obviously have to be pleased with this team at this juncture, 19-10. and 10. I think overall the start has been uh, really uh, very exciting for everyone that, that's been involved. Uh, to be here, we're pleasantly surprised uh, that we're 19 and 10 leading the division right now. Not many people would have suspected that. And uh, to see Mike put players in a position that they can thrive uh, is, is really the, the difference here. I think Boris uh, has blossomed, but it's because Mike thinking outside of the box has put himself in a position to do that. Amari Stoudemire hopefully returning in late February. When he went down with a surgery, what were your expectations at this stage of the season? 
never like to put a number on things, but uh, I would tell you that I would be surprised to tell you we're 19 and 10. I knew we were a better team because we did address the depth. And uh, it's something that uh, was important, and I think the depth has allowed us to weather the storm right now. Jim Jackson jacks it up and in from the outside. It's now a one-point game. And then Leandro Barbosa, again, he is on the men, hopefully returning the next two to three weeks. What will that mean to the team? I think it's going to mean a lot. You're going to see a lot quicker team out there. Uh, we play a lot faster than the basketball that way. Eddie Curry, strong move. Inside will head to the line for a free throw. Well, the Knicks continue to take the ball hard to the basket. I talked about their free throws, and that's their 16th point in the paint. Big guy Curry showing why they signed him and went hard and goes in the free throw. All right. You mentioned Ryan Barbosa. Uh, when, when we lost Barbosa in, top, in terms of uh, you know throwing that on top of the Umari injury, it just really set us back. But once again, players have come through and played well. And uh, again, you're going to see a different speed when he gets back on the floor. All right. I'll put you on the hot seat. I want you to analyze this New York Knicks team. Highest payroll in the league. Seven victories tied for the worst record with the Atlanta Hawks. How do they dig themselves out of this hole? Well, I helped dig the hole. Um, <laughs> I, I, You're still holding the shovel. Well, it, you know, sometimes things happen for, for a reason. I think that uh, we were in a perfect position to make a deal, and uh, you know, we were able to unload some contracts and improve our team at the same time because of the flexibility that we created. Yet, uh, I tell you, they're a good young team. They've got a lot of young pieces that I like. I think they've done very well in the draft. Uh, between Ariza last year and then Channing Fry, he's turned out to be a very nice player. And a strong run here by the Knicks early in the second quarter. Phenomenal jam by Clintel Woods, then Jamal Crawford fires in the three-pointer. Eddie House slamming the ball down in disgust. And it's a 10-point Knicks lead. More with Brian Colangelo when we come back. But here's the run by the Knicks, Thunder Dan. Quintel Woods, a surprise sign, goes hard to the basket, being aggressive. Shows he wants more playing time. Knicks up by 10. Knicks 37, Suns 27 here in the second. Time now for Bud Light's What's on Tap. Bud Light, smooth and refreshing. Great taste for your great times. That's why we pay Dan Marley the big bucks. The big bucks, Brian. And right the sound there. effects. That's right. He, uh, he's doing his job. Suns heading home to Phoenix. Three-game homestand, some tasty games. Philadelphia and Allen Iverson, number one in the league in scoring right now, 34 points per game. And then it's Shaq, Dwayne Wade, the Miami Heat, followed by the defending NBA champion, San Antonio Spurs. Again, Tom Leander back with Dan Marley and Suns president, Brian Colangelo. Brian, finish up your thoughts on the Knicks. Yeah, I just think that uh, a lot of people want to know what, what I think of Isaiah and the job he's done. I, I give Isaiah a lot of credit for what he's been able to do here in terms of making things happen. He's not afraid to pull the trigger on things. And he's done a great job, as I said, uh, I think with the draft. Uh, Channing Fry, I mentioned, but uh, to get Nate Robinson, and you saw what David Lee did here early. Uh, both players that we liked in last year's draft, but uh, I think that they're uh, poised for, for great things in the future, and it's just a, a matter of time before this all shakes out. They do have a heavy payroll, obviously, but uh, that, that's part of making those deals that uh, got them some pretty good talent. Now it's just a matter of letting the thing, uh, you know, settle. And uh, I think that with the young players that they have, the young pieces, uh, again, they're poised for a good run in the future. Suns defensive three-second violation. The technical free throw by Jamal Crawford. Raja Bell with a three-pointer just moments ago, and that ended an 8-0 Knicks run. They've hit their last six shots, four of four here in the second quarter, and currently shooting 67% from the field. Mo Taylor now in the low block, going up against Morris Diaw. A rebounded there by Kurt Thomas, knocked out of bounds. I want to ask you about Mike D'Antoni again, his philosophy, his system, and how the personnel just thrives under D'Antoni. A lot of people uh, talking about that around the league right now, that players come here, uh, they find a way to resuscitate their careers in some cases, but uh, I think Mike puts them in a position to blossom, and uh, something fell on the court there. Yeah. If that's tape or a yeah, piece of paper. Piece of tape. Right there in mid-court. But I think Mike uh, deserves a tremendous amount of credit for the success that we're having uh, as a team. And again, to put players in a position to feel like they can thrive is half the battle. What? Hello, Thunder Dan. I'm just sitting over enjoying the game. Out. No, you guys are doing good. I'm just enjoying the game. <laughs> Should we just send it back to Phoenix right no, now? No, you want to talk? I, I'm, no, no. I'm interested. Hey, you guys are trained professionals. <laughs> you touched on Boris Diaw. Everybody kind of panicked when we didn't re-sign Joe Johnson. But, you know, this trade and we end up getting Boris Diaw and just see the emergence of his game. And he's got a long ways to go and he continues to get better. Talk a little bit more about him. 
again, it's it's one of those things. You look at a young player, uh, you think he's got some talent, and felt it was uh, untapped at the time. Uh, had liked him over the course of the previous three years, back to when we were scouting him in Europe, and our staff uh, as a whole, I think, liked him. But uh, again, to put him out there on the floor and think outside of the box the way Mike did, to put him at the four and the five spot, he's still making plays. He's still a playmaker, but at the four and the five, he's just uh, creating all kinds of problems for other people that defend him. Inside, nice Kurt Thomas with the crush. Pass, Jimmy. Off the assist feed from Jimmy Jackson. See, what? Kurt Thomas, you bring him over in the trade with New York. How about Eddie House, too? What a vital contribution he has given to this team. Kind of a late signing there in the summer. It was a late signing. Both he and James Jones were... Uh, brought in to try to pick up some of the scoring that we were going to miss with Joe and Q both gone. Uh, but he's done a terrific job. And, and again, i got to give Mike a lot of credit because Mike really pushed that along. Uh, we had heard a lot of different things about Eddie, but uh, I must say that he's come in and done a terrific job for us in a lot of ways, both on and off the floor. Marbury now 4 of 5 from the field, 8 points. The Suns then cough it up. Here comes Jamal Crawford and the Knicks on the run. Sidesteps Kurt Thomas and finishes with the left hand, Jamal Crawford. Back to a 10-point Knicks lead. Suns still led by Marion's 10. Knicks now got eight points off the bench from Crawford, who's hit all three of his shots. Offensive foul, Kurt Thomas of Phoenix. Well, Phoenix right now, too many turnovers, allowing the Knicks to get out and run, and Crawford did a good job of sidestepping Kurt Thomas and getting the layup. And one thing you don't want to do with this New York team is allow them to get some easy baskets as they have struggled offensively. Brian, you talked about Mike D'Antoni, the attention he's garnering, the reigning coach of the year. How about Steve Nash? I mean, his numbers are even better than last season when he won the MVP honor. Testament to his leadership and things that he does uh, on the court. He makes us go. And uh, no matter what we do injury-wise, he, he obviously is a key to uh, keeping the tempo up. And again, we're not as fast and as quick as we are normally, but uh, he's certainly keeping things uh, under control here and, and leading us all the way. Marion with the steal. Up ahead, Raja Bell with the finish. And the Suns cut the lead now to eight. Second hoop for Raja. we got to think about not playing Kurt against his former team. He gets a little excited, doesn't he? <laughs> you always get a little excited when you come back, especially in the garden. He wants to play well here. But Sean, doing what he does, long arms, gets a steal. And that was a beautiful pass. Just laid it out for Raja Bell. Kurt Thomas. Fronting Eddie Curry in an offensive foul on Curry. You talk about Kurt Thomas, the first meeting against the Knicks. One of six from the field, but he did have 12 rebounds. I remember Thunder Dan coming back to Phoenix a couple of times. and My first time back, I enjoyed it. Yeah, you sure did. Breaking the ankles of Joe Klein. I think we relived that a few weeks ago. The first time in Cleveland, I came back. I played well. And then my, first game, my first game back uh, in Miami, I hit the game-winning shot. That's right. It's a pretty big deal, Brian. I don't know if you know. And you got free beer over at Marley's after the game. That was every game. <laughs> Steve Nash with a direct hit from the outside. Now two of three from the field. Five points so far for Nash. It's a six-point game. And our thanks to Suns President Brian Colangelo for joining us here in the second quarter. Gentlemen, thanks. Hopefully thanks for dinner the other night, too. That was really nice of you. Yeah, happy New really Year to cool. everyone back in Phoenix. Did he break, break the bank, BC, Marley, on New You Year's were there. Chicago. I was not. I was oh, you my weren't brothers. there. That's right. You missed the good one. Thanks for noticing. Knicks by six here in the second quarter of this day in NBA history, presented by Paddock Pools, Patios, and Spas since 1958. We're all your backyard needs. January 2nd, 1987, the Indiana Pacers beat the LA Clippers 116-106 to give coach Jack Ramsey his 800th NBA victory. At the time, one of only two coaches along with Red Auerbach to reach that plateau. Love, Dr. Jack. Mm -hmm. Reaching the end of the road trip, players bringing family along, and there they are. Bella and Lola, the lovely twin daughters of Steve Nash. Very entertaining, Point watching them walk up and down the aisles on the plane, <laughs> having a great time. Again, now do you know the difference? Again, Lola has the straight hair, like Steve. Bella yeah, has... I noticed that the other night. Okay. And she got that straight. Here come the Suns. Nash, pitch it out to Jim Jackson, wide open for three. Can't connect, and then tipped by Eddie Curry out of bounds. The Suns should have it, and they will with 6.22 to go until halftime. Well, there was Steve Nash at his best, just waiting to that, for that play to develop. Found Jim Jackson, like you said, wide open. Jim wasn't, to knock it, wasn't able to knock it down, but it just shows you why Steve Nash is so good. Just was biding his time until he got Jim Jackson wide open. 
Knicks playing solid basketball here in the first half. And biggest lead has been 10 points against the Suns. This is a team that has endured four straight losing seasons ever since Jeff Van Gundy resigned. In comes Larry Brown, but it has been a tumultuous first year. Suns turn it over. There's Nate Robinson. And fouled in the backcourt by Raja Bell of Phoenix. Just a mistake there by Raja as Kurt Thomas got switched off and had Nate Robinson on him. Raja should have threw it up in the air, instead decided to throw a bounce pass. Nate Robinson was able to take it away. When you got a small guy like that on, you got to throw it up and let Kurt just go get it. Knicks without Quentin Richardson. He misses second meeting with the Suns. Missed the first one back in Phoenix due to the death of his brother. And after that game in Phoenix, the entire Knicks team moved from Phoenix to Chicago to be with Q at that field. Inside Mo Taylor, but Quentin Richardson is out with back spasms. And he had some back issues with the Clippers, and that's one of the reasons the deal between the Suns and the Knicks was stalled. Well, I was walking down the street here today and a guy came up to me and said hey thanks for Q he's doing a lot for us <laughs> it's like what my fault <laughs> you think Ryan Flangelo he just left here though Jim Jackson fires it in from the outside and the lead is six what an emotional year though for Quentin Richardson you probably know the story it's the second time he's had a brother killed in a shooting and had the breakup with his fiance prior to this season and just a, a rough first year here with the Knicks. His numbers have been way down, and you feel that media pressure here in New York City. And the pressure from your head coach, Larry Brown. Jim Jackson, he is feeling it here in the second quarter. There's the old Jim Jackson. Maybe Ohio State must be beating Notre Dame. Oh, uh, they were up at halftime. He must be feeling good about himself. But to be, you know, fair to Q, I, I was in the same situation. When I got traded from Phoenix to Cleveland that year. When you go from a team that's up-tempo, uh, running to a team that's more half court. And it takes a while to develop your game again and to, to get used to that kind of system. And then throw in the problems he's had with the back and the personal problems. It may take a little bit of time for Q to, to get it going. Mo Taylor with the jam. That ended a 9 2 Phoenix Suns run. Back to a full five point advantage here for the Knicks. Sean Marion rising up and drills it. Marion, his first hoop after scoring the first 10 for Phoenix. Well, Sean doesn't get a whole lot of plays run for him, but we've seen that a lot on this road trip when they don't get fast breaks, just that pin down on the weak side. Sean catching it and shooting a little 15-footer. Nash and Jim Jackson trying to force the turnover. Here's Taylor again at the cup, wiped out there by Kurt Thomas, who said that Mo Taylor used the off arm to push off, but it's Thomas busted for the personal. Good hustle by Jim Jackson, saved that ball. It looked like the ball went right through Steve Nash's legs into David Lee's hand. There you go, Kurt. Showing that athletic ability that everybody says he doesn't have with the block. Kurt's been a blocking machine here. Goes over to take the charge and recovers and goes up and thought he had a clean block there. To the line will go Mo Taylor. He's coming off his season high 18 points as Kurt Thomas now has picked up his fourth personal foul here in the first half. Four fouls in 16 minutes of play for Kurt Thomas. And there is Mo Taylor, the 18 points in a losing effort against the Milwaukee Bucks. And Mo Taylor actually didn't start playing organized hoops until his sophomore year in high school. Well, right now the Knicks being aggressive getting to the free throw line, but unfortunately for them, only shooting 42% from the line. I'm thinking that Mo Taylor, if he didn't start playing hoops until his sophomore year in high school, had to have been on the football team, playing Pop Warner or something. He has some beef. Here come the Suns, trailing by four. Marbury, the defensive assignment now on Nash, goes under the pick. Nash fires wide left, rebounded by Marion, resets to Raja. Jim Jackson off the bench here with seven points for Phoenix. They've also received seven points from Eddie House. Jim Jackson, 10 on the shot clock, no look feed to Nash. Trying to evade Antonio Davis, and it's Jim Jackson again, back iron for three. Jamal Crawford, the one-time bull, gets it back now from David Lee. Fires for three. Rims out, boarded there by Jim Jackson. Suns out rebounding the Knicks by one. Sean Marion to the cup. Unable to put it down, and here comes Marbury. Flip it over to David Lee. Well, I'll tell you, that was pretty. Great pass by Jim Jackson. Sean wasn't able to finish, but then David Lee showed that athletic ability with a beautiful baseline movement dunk. Inside of three minutes to go until halftime. 
Suns going after win number 20 on the season. A hold and a foul there. Maurice Taylor in a mismatch trying to cover Steve Nash on the perimeter. Well, you're going to see this young kid from Florida showing why he needs some more playing time. The rookie taking the ball from Stephon Marby going baseline. First one-handed back to two slams it down. The Knicks playing some good basketball. Knicks leading by six, still here in the second quarter, hanging with the guys. What a better place to be than catching a Suns game. Grab your buddies and head on down to U.S. Airways Center to enjoy the guys' night out with the Suns special offer. This unique package includes two tickets, two beers, and two T-shirts. Call 800-4NBA-TICKS or visit suns.com. So I guess it's now official. We're calling it U.S. Airways Center. Officially, it becomes that, as opposed to America West Arena on January 6th. And Jim Jackson... Pumped up here in the second quarter. Yeah, had been struggling of a late, but it's found his touch here in the garden with a three, and then Raja Bell penetrates, and Jim Jackson steps into it, hits another jumper, and then good ball movement. Wide open, and J.J. knocks down another one. Ohio State alumni. Ten seconds on the shot clock for Boris Dial. Pumps it in from the outside. Boris Dial and the Suns now within four. Suns shooting 50% from the field. The Knicks at a 60% clip. And if Boris continues to hit that jump shot, he will be unguardable. We've talked about it before. Much like Amari Stoudemire, the better outside shooter he becomes, it's going to get easier to take the ball, put it on the floor, and get to the basket. Oh, the little things with Sean Marion. How about that rebound? Went up there high in the air. Looked like he had missed time that jump and just hung in the air for rebound number eight here in the first half for Sean Marion. Nash. Right in the face of Mo Taylor, drills it. Steve Nash now with his third hoop. 7.7 7 assists. Second time Mo Taylor's got caught on Nash. First time he took him to the basket, caused the foul. That time Taylor's backed up. Nash has dropped the jumper on him. Mo Taylor spins on Boris Dial, flips in the right-handed hook. Pretty move there by Mo Taylor. He's come off the bench with seven. Excellent bench production for New York. Jamal Crawford has eight. Channing Fry five, Quintel Woods with three off the pine. Rebounded there by a starter, David Lee. Final minute 30 here of the first half. Suns head home after this one. Nine days on the road and down it goes for Stephon Marbury. When asked what was his first thought when Larry Brown was named head coach of the Knicks, he said it's going to be a long season. <laughs> Here Stefan comes off that pick and roll, gave a little ball and head fake to Sean Marion, was able to split Marion and Diaw and got to the basket. Once again, finishes and goes to the line. Dana was talking to a New York Knicks insider before this game, and basically he said, Stefan Marbury is miserable. How much longer will he be a New York Knick? Well, I don't know. I mean, that's a heck of a contract to have. And doesn't seem like it's working, and I don't think Larry Brown's going to go anywhere unless he resigns, so Steph will probably try to get traded. I don't know if it'll ever happen, but this is, uh, you know, you look at this team, they got a lot of talent, obviously, but like Brian said, I really like their young talent. I mean, David Lee looks good. Uh, Ariza, who hasn't played yet, Channing Fry, uh, Nate Robbins, all young, good young players. Of course, winning cures all ills, and Marbury in the Knicks leading right now by seven, and Marbury having a very strong first half. 11 points, five assists so far, and a foul there on Raja Bell. Brutal. That is just a bad call. So Nick had, there was two seconds left on the shot clock. Oh, Malik and he's Rose, teed up. No, oh, he should have got it. That was just a terrible call. Malik Rose had the ball, was going absolutely nowhere with it, and then he get Raja Bell for a knee. As Malik Rose turns his back here, two seconds left on the oh, shot clock. wow. That is That's just a bad You know, point. and then Raja Bell heads the other way, all the way down to the Suns bench. And Tim Donahue, he watched him the entire way. He wanted to tee up Raja Bell. Maybe he's just a little insecure. <laughs> and needs to be loved. Conversation. Don't we all? Uh, again, going back to that Knicks insider, Dano, he said, uh, speaking of love, Larry Brown needs to dispense more hugs and not so much criticism with his players, especially here publicly with his team, but not a whole lot to criticize here in the first half. Knicks adding to their lead. These guys make so much money they can buy love. It's not his job to give them love. <laughs> Kidding me? So you're saying you'd like to play for Larry Brown? Well, if, if the pay, legs if and pay, foot were still they, willing? If they pay me the contracts they're paying these guys, sure. Well, I'm figuring you're 40 years old with a bum foot. Isaiah, give you $7 million. 
Take it. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Sorry, Zeke. 53 seconds to go until halftime. And a loose ball foul. Suns will have it on the side. Marion with a dozen here to lead Phoenix. They have three other players that have seven points here in the half. <laughs> Isaiah's over there going, Marlon? Yeah, you know what? He looked good. It's the stick. Nick Huni. Two-man game. Nash and Dial. Boris rolls. Nash trying to find him. Bounces the pass off of Mo Taylor. Up ahead. Free pass for Jamal Crawford. Talking about the, the turnovers, Tom. He can't allow these turnovers. The Knicks at 58 points here. They only average 94 games. Sounds like they do a better job. Knicks with their biggest lead up by 11. Nash now to Raja Bell. Trying to end the Knicks run. And down it goes for Raja Bell. And now Stephon Marbury, New York, can take the final shot of the first half, knowing full well they will head to the locker room with the lead on the Suns. Knicks losers of 10 of their last 11. Team has been in disarray, but they are clicking here in the first half. Marbury for three. What a way to end the first half. Marbury and the Knicks head to the locker room with their biggest lead up by a dozen. Wow. Young guys come in, David Lee, great. Showed a lot of fire, Knicks playing good defense, getting out and run, get some easy buckets. Sun's got a long way to climb here in the second half, but don't count them out yet, they've done it all trip. Could be a road-weary Phoenix Suns team. They have given up 61 points here in the first half. Kevin Ray, Tom Chambers standing by with a halftime report back in Phoenix. With director Dan Siegman, our producer Bob Adlock, Tom Leander, and Dan Marley back with you from New York City. Knicks outscore the Suns 34-26 in that second period. They outscored the Suns 12-2 in the final minutes of that first half. They hit eight of their last 11 from the field. They have their biggest lead up by a dozen. And Dana mentioned as we headed to the break that maybe this is a road-weary Phoenix Suns team. You see it in the turnovers, 11 turnovers. Plus, you also see it in the defense, giving up 61 points in the first half. Yeah, to a team that only averages about 94. And you're right, you know, last day of a nine-day trip, you 4-0, you come out against a team you obviously, obviously should beat. Didn't come out here with the fire, and now they're in a little bit of trouble. And the big statistic for me is 32 points for the Knicks in the paint, only 10 for the Suns, and they get to the free throw line 16 times. And Luckily, they only made nine, and the Suns may be down a lot worse than that. And also, we got uh, David Lee, the young rookie, played well. Five for six. Stephon Marbury, we knew he'd come out fired up. Six for seven, and then Jamal Crawford off the bench. Four for five, so these guys shooting 62%. Take a look at tonight's Gila River Casino's winner's board. Gila River Casino's where the winners play. Marion, 10 of those 12 points to start the game for the Suns. And there's Marbury, Crawford, and Lee combined 15 of 18 from the field. The three players missed a combined three shots in the first half in a three-second violation against Eddie Curry of the Knicks. And I think New York's going to continue to try to palm the ball in the paint. Curry... Trying to post up, got caught for being in there too long, three seconds, turnover. Suns get the basketball, and they got to do a better job, like you said. 11 turnovers for the Suns, which led to 14 fast break points, or points off the of turnovers for the Knicks. And then a head-on collision there between Marbury and Raja Bell. You talk about the Knicks' points in the paint, dominating the Suns in that category, and then Kurt Thomas with a four personal fouls. So he's going to have to watch himself in the second half to stay on the floor. And that's big because with the New York Knicks size, they continue to pound the ball inside. So we're going to need Kurt on the post defense in there to play and can't be sitting over on the bench. Foul was whistled on Marbury. Boris Diaw, open look, courtesy Steve Nash. Nash, eight assists in the first half. He now has nine on the evening. It's a 10-point Knicks lead. Steve averaging nearly 11 assists per game. The numbers have been up in the assist department on this road trip. Almost 13 assists per night. Nate Robinson did not score, did not have a field goal in that first half, looking for Antonio Davis on the back cut. And a good pass by Nate Robinson. Antonio Davis, I thought, thought that Thomas was going to foul him. Kurt did a good job of avoiding the contact, not wanting to pick up that fifth foul, and he ended up missing the puppy. And then you see Boris Diaw popping back and hitting the second jumper in a row. Stroking his second shot here to begin the third quarter. 
And the Suns with the first four points of the second half. Marbury was sensational in that opening period. Really playing within himself, took seven shots, hit six, and dished out five assists. Barreling into Kurt Thomas, offensive foul, Stefan Marbury. Raja Bell, good one-on-one -on -one defense. Stefan dribbled for a good 10, 11 seconds, then finally took it to the basket, and Kurt Thomas on the weak side stepped in, got the call. Isaiah Thomas, just about a week ago, talking about the struggles of this Knicks team, basically looking to the future, saying, we have three building blocks. Eddie Curry, Channing Frye, and our head coach Larry Brown. Stephon Marbury was not on that list. Nash for three, comes up shy. Well, we may want to add David Lee after this game because <laughs> the kid looks good. Marbury drops the shoulder, bounces into Forrest Diaw, initiating the contact. He'll head in line for a potential three-point play. Forrest doesn't agree, and I can't. I got to say I agree with him. But this is Stephon Marbury's game, just putting that head down. And here it causes a con contact. Looks like Forrest straight, straight up, and you're going to see again Stephon attacking and makes the contact here. Boris looked like he went straight up and got the foul. Boris and Coach D'Antoni didn't think so. And you know the footnote that has been following Stephon Marbury throughout his career. He is now on his fourth NBA team, but he has never won a playoff series. Lob feed. Kurt Thomas looking for Sean Marion, but it was knocked away there. Nate Robinson, one of the defenders, and now brings it up the floor for the Knicks. Looking for Curry, goes out of bounds, turnover New York. That play never developed. Kurt Thomas should have never thrown a pass because Nate Robinson saw that back pick all the way and was there to disrupt it. Suns now in their half-court set, shooting 51% so far from the field. Kurt Thomas off a dandy dish from Nash, but comes up short. And Kurt's shooting woes continue against his former team. One for six in Phoenix, one for three so far here tonight. Double team, Diaw now leaves Kurt Thomas to defend Eddie Curry. Help from Marion, Marbury finds David Lee. Nearly three minutes deep here into the third quarter. Knicks lead is 13. Nash from the outside, straight but short. The Suns getting good looks at it. That time Kurt set the pick and just rolled. Nobody on Nash just missed the wide open, but New York continues to pound it in the post. Suns scoring the first four points of the second half, but now Marbury and the Knicks looking to add their 13-point advantage, rebounded by Boris Diaw. Scraping from behind Antonio Davis, who played for Suns head coach Mike D'Antoni in Italy. Great story that Antonio Davis was actually on the team in Italy when Mike D'Antoni first experimented with small ball, the small ball line of his team in Italy was really struggling. And so he went to a much smaller lineup and went on a win streak. So uh, when you talk to Mike D'Antoni about Antonio Davis, he says, that's my guy. Well, Curry got switched off on Nash, and once again backed off, not even wanting to get beat to the basket. Nash just popped the jumper, and we're going to need more of that as the Suns continue to get some wide open looks at the basket. They just got to get hot and start to close this gap. Kurt Thomas poking away at Curry, loses his balance, and now Boris Diaw and the Suns loping ahead. Raja Bell pulls up for two. Got it. Raja Bell sticks it from the outside. He is now four of six, shooting nine points for Raja Bell. And the Suns pulled within nine. Larry Brown, like the Suns saw in Scott Skiles, I'm sure trying to keep the Suns from an extended run here in the third quarter. A hoop here, don't be surprised to see a timeout called by Larry Brown. Here comes Nash and Phoenix. The switch, the feed to Boris Diaw, hits the floor, foul on Nate Robinson, and a ticket to the line for Boris Diaw. Raja doing a good job defensively on the other end, making Stefan Marbury pull up and shoot jump shots, and again, Boris Diaw stepping out for the pick and pop. Nate Robinson being a little over energetic, went out there, tried to get a hand in the face, end up fouling Diaw in the jump shot. Quite a road trip for Boris Diaw, who hits the first free throw. Boris Diaw's number in the first four games on this road trip, averaging 18 points, nine rebounds, six assists, and shooting 52% from the field. One of two at the line, though, for Boris Diaw. The Suns now have put up only five free throw attempts, three of five from the line. The Knicks now 10 of 18, missing eight free shots, and yet still lead by eight. Inside, 
Easy power move there for Antonio Davis. Nate Robinson coming off the pick and roll, went up like he was going to shoot it. Suns lost sight of both him and Antonio Davis threw a bullet pass, and all he had to do was lay it in. Davis coming over from Chicago in that sign and trade for Eddie Curry. The Knicks accepting the high salary of Antonio Davis, making his way down the floor. 37 years of age. Eddie Curry trying to post up Kurt Thomas. Robinson, and the foul there on Steve Nash of Phoenix. Suns just look a little step slow here tonight. A lot of their jump shots coming up short, which tells you that they may be a little tired as we've talked about them coming off this long road trip. Everybody, I'm sure, is anxious to get home and been very successful, but sometimes it's hard to close out a road trip with the win, and especially against a team like the Knicks who want to start off this 2006 with a with a win because they've had enough losses there in 05, so they're very desperate. Knicks only 4-8 and eight here at home, and another missed free throw. You can see a perplexed Isaiah Thomas. His team now missed firing nine times at the free throw line. Nate Robinson at the stripe, and his teammate Malik Rose saying of Nate Robinson, this is a guy who goes 100 miles per hour, but his mouth is even faster. And one of the things Larry Brown is trying to teach him is not so much jabbering with the officials, with the referees. Tends to get himself in trouble out there on the court. And he's trying to learn the referees' first names, too. Don't call the officials ref. They don't like that. Marion miss, boarded by Davis, who's then poked in the eye. Raja Bell trying to prod it free with 6.22 to go here in the third. And Raja hit with a personal foul. That is the third team foul now on Phoenix. Two so far on the Knicks. And now into the front court comes Stephon Marbury in New York. Drives to his left, up and under, denied there by Boris Diaw. Still 13 on the shot clock, Nate Robinson looking for Antonio Davis and finds Thunder Dan Marley. Great hands. To Dan kill him in the mix. <laughs> That's why you see why Phoenix is number one in the league of shot blocking is they continue to have guys coming from the weak side. That time Boris Diaw helped on when Stephon Marbury got all the way to the paint. Beautiful block. Kurt Thomas ripping the cords, top of the key. Another assist for Steve Nash. He now has 11, second field goal for Kurt Thomas. And the lead, still nine for New York. Biggest advantage has been 13, and there's the timeout called by Larry Brown and the New York Knicks. Last NBA title here in New York, 1973 under Red Holtzman. They're a ways away from competing for another one, but here tonight, very competitive against the Suns as Kurt Thomas finds the range from the outside. Third quarter here in New York, Knicks leading by nine. Suns, Steve Nash, second currently among Western Conference guards and balloting right behind Kobe Bryant, a litany of all-star point guards for Phoenix, including Stephon Marbury, who has the ball now for Phoenix, DJ, KJ, Jason Kidd. Steve Nash has never been voted a starter, though, for an all-star game. Suns have had eight players who have been voted in as a starter. One of those eight to my right, Thunder and Marley. What did I do? You were voted in as a starter back in 1995. Steve Nash hoping to be a, an all-star starter. Coming up here in about a month as Nash draws the foul, bucket and one for the reigning MVP. Yeah, you know, Steve Nash was in the same league as me. <laughs> Tough. Wasn't that, that was the all-star game in Phoenix, too. They were stuffing the ballot box that year, sure. didn't they? <laughs> So to the line goes Steve Nash. And as ugly as this game has been, Tom, you look at the scoreboard, down by six. Hmm. And keep looking at those missed free throws. You know, that's going through the mind of Larry Brown and Isaiah Thomas. Nine missed free throws. Suns within six. Kurt Thomas pokes it away out of bounds. 13 on the shot clock for New York. They have a few days off before they play again. The Knicks will be hosting the Washington Wizards here in New York on Friday and then host the Seattle Sonics on Sunday. So I'm getting back in action at the America West Arena on Wednesday against Allen Iverson and the Sixers. Kurt Thomas holding his ground, forcing the miss by Mo Taylor. Loose ball scooped up by David Lee. 
Eddie House out there now for Phoenix here in the third quarter, along with Nash, Boris Diaw, Kurt Thomas, and Sean Marion. David Lee, kind of a knuckleball release, but he finds the mark. Suns push it up ahead, Eddie House. Quick fire for three, comes up short. Eight point lead for New York. David Lee has taken eight shots, missed only once. Seven of eight, 15 points, seven rebounds for the rookie, the final pick in the first round. Suns coming back off that New York turnover. Knicks now have coughed it up 13 times, the Suns 12. Kurt Thomas straight and sweet. Nash now 12 assists, third hoop for Kurt Thomas, six point game. Starting to see a little fire of the Suns the last two times defensively have done a good job, just weren't able to secure the loose ball. It's when David Lee hit the jump shot, but got a turnover. Nash took it all the way down, and I'm sure Kurt Thomas loves to hit those jumpers here at the Garden. Offensive rebound and hitting the wood, grabbing his back now, Antonio Davis. He is in serious pain at the 357 mark here of the third quarter. Basically collapsed to the ground, grabbing his back, and not a good sight for the 37-year-old Antonio Davis. Looks like he went up for the rebound and got pushed in the small of the back. Came down kind of awkwardly, and sometimes when you have a bad back, that's all it takes. All the Knicks grouped around Antonio Davis. Medical staff there. And landed awkwardly. Yeah, it kind of went up and looked like he got pushed and kind of hyper-extended there. And when you do have back problems and things of that nature, sometimes just coming down awkwardly can trigger a spasm. or Especially when you get up there in age, Tom, you do. <laughs> sometimes I see you getting out of that chair wrong. I don't know if you're going to make it. I mentioned those lunges in the press lounge. It's stretching out, actually. But Antonio Davis is up and now walking on his own. See if he's well enough to continue in this game. But no, he will head to the New York Knicks sideline. You know, it's interesting. Look, he went to UTEP. And, of course, UTEP before becoming the University of Texas at El Paso. Texas Western. Te Texas Western. Glory Road. Antonio Davis is old, but he's not that old. He wasn't on that championship team of 1966. That just was my to, next. Just to clarify. So they bring in the rookie, Channing Fry. Fry, who had five points in the first half from the outside. Jamal Crawford, still sizzling for New York. Set up by Stephon Marbury, faking like he was going to go off the screen. Took it to his right all the way to the basket. Eddie House collapsed, leaving Jamal Crawford wide open. Crawford now with 14. Nash setting up Kurt Thomas again. Those two have a telepathy going here in the third quarter. Well, let's hope Kurt Thomas stays hot that way and they're not going to be able to leave him and then Steve Nash can start doing da damage off the pick and roll. Four of seven now shooting for Kurt Thomas in the corner. It's Crawford again, boarded there by James Jones. Eddie House, the only one releasing on the break, Dan Marley. The other four sons making their way into the front court. I have no problem with that because, first of all, against this Nick team, we want to be able to secure a rebound and... Eddie House getting out and trying to run, but the other guys are staying back trying to get those rebounds. And then Steve Nash almost let go of that pass. Thought he had Eddie House for a second, but thought better of it. Here, going off the pick and roll, Kurt wide open. The New York Knicks lay down the rotation and knocks down, and Kurt's starting to feel it. You talk to anybody here in New York as Nash launches and connects the big shot. Absolutely for Steve Nash in the zone with AutoZone. Another $100 to Phoenix Suns Charities. It's a four-point game. Six made, three-pointer for Phoenix. But you talk to anybody here in New York about Kurt Thomas, and they use the word classy, one of the classiest Knicks ever. The Suns are realizing that, a tremendous locker room influence and leader, Kurt Thomas, helping to lead the Suns back here in the third quarter, along with Steve Nash. And we have a timeout here with 2.48 to go in the third. Well, if you talk bad about Kurt Thomas, he'll beat you up. And this time, Stefan tries to go underneath the pick and roll, and Steve Nash more times than not, we'll make you pay. It's a four-point game. Suns on a 13-5 push here in the third quarter, closing the gap to four. Time now for tonight's APS power matchup. APS, the power to make it happen. College football, Buckeyes over the fighting Irish. 34-20, a good night for Jimmy Jackson, the Buckeye alum, but not so good for Timmy Kempton. And me, I threw away another $100. Yeah. Add it to the pot. 
five-hour flight back to Phoenix. That's what I get for the listening card to game. <laughs> Nash going deep again, rims out, boarded there by Maurice Taylor. The Knicks have turned it over six times here in the third quarter. The Suns only once. And it's Jamal Crawford with the 14 points directing the offense for Larry Brown and the Knicks. Marbury goes low block to Mo Taylor, defended there by Kurt Thomas. Banging chest, Thomas hangs right with Mo Taylor. The defensive presence of Kurt Thomas, something the Suns haven't had in the past couple of seasons. James Jones passes on the three, finds the howitzer, comes up short. Tough break there for Phoenix. Tough break, good pass by James Jones, turned down that three. Over to a wide open house, who happened to miss it. And again, the Suns get back, cause a turnover. Suns picking Stephon Marbury clean. Nash, one of the players there. Mike D'Antoni raving about the defense by Steve Nash on this road trip. James doesn't turn that one down, misses the wide open three. Suns are getting good looks, just haven't been able to knock me down. And defensively, they're getting better. Nick shot 60% from the field in the first half, down to 54%. Tough shot there. Jamal Crawford right in the face of pressure from Nash. Not much more you can do defensively there. Jamal Crawford, 16 points. Marion flash free momentarily, and now Nash will wait for Kurt Thomas. Minute 15 to go here in the third quarter. Defensively, it's Mo Taylor. Tracking Nash, fires over Mo Taylor, comes up short. Ball goes out of bounds off of Quintel Wood. Suns will have it. Here comes Nate Robinson for New York. Come explore the new Verizon Wireless Jungle on level four of the America West Arena at all Suns home games. Tons of fun for kids and adults alike. Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. A breather for Stefan Marbury here in the final stages of the third period. Inbounds play, Marion short arms it. Back up he goes, Sean Marion cleaning up his own mess. How amazing is Sean Marion off the play out of bounds. Shot a short, jumped up before even Fry could think about jumping, caught it and laid it back in. Looking for double-double number 22. Mary now 14 points and nine boards for the Suns within four. Robinson ad-libbing there in the lane, blocking foul on Steve Nash of Phoenix. And the Suns in the penalty situation to the line will go Jamal Crawford. Jamal Crawford had a 40-point game last season against the Suns here in New York. That was actually scored 50 in a game a couple years ago against Toronto when he was playing with the Chicago Bulls. And he has been electrifying here for New York off the pine. One of the few who's been able to connect as well at the stripe has hit all three of his free throws. 17 points, five assists so far for Crawford. Make that 18. And the Knicks lead now is six. Now their free throw percentage is just a tad better than their field goal percentage. 59 from the line, 55 from the floor. The Suns, first place in the Pacific Division, started two and a half games up on the L.A. Clippers before the start of this game here tonight. Marion absolutely for three. Down it goes for the Matrix. Another $100 to Suns Charities from AutoZone. Three-point ball game. You see there why Eddie House has been so valuable. He usually knocks down shots. That time, putting it on the floor, creating for Sean Marion. We've already seen four fantastic finishes by the Suns on the road. Looks like we're headed to another dramatic fourth quarter. Nate Robinson ripping the course for three. Big answer for the Knicks here in the final seconds of the fourth quarter. A very confident three-pointer launched by Robinson. Nash and the Suns run out of time. One of the few times Steve Nash not aware of the shot clock and the game clock. You're right. I thought he was going to pull up and shoot that three off the pick and roll. And you'll never see that probably from Nash as long as you watch our broadcast. He didn't know how much time was left. Thought he was going to shoot a runner. First bucket of the night for Nate Robinson was a three-pointer. So the Knicks head to the fourth and final quarter, leading the Phoenix Suns by six. And you are watching Phoenix Suns basketball live from New York City on UPN 45. Welcome back to the eighth wonder of the world, the Madison Square Garden, where the Suns are down 75 to 81. And let's check out tonight's Jack in the Box inside the box score. See Sean Mayer, the 17 points and nine rebounds. David Lee, the rookie, getting a chance to start with 15 points. And the points in the paint dominated by the Knicks, 40 to 14. Nate Robinson with the momentum killer for Phoenix, hitting that three to end that third quarter. 
Nate Robinson, great in Phoenix. First meeting between these two teams. Six of seven from the field, had 14 points. You may remember, he was actually selected with the 21st pick in the first round by the Suns, then shipped to New York in the deal, along with Quentin Richardson for Kurt Thomas. Crawford hits the wood. So does Nate Robinson, turnover Knicks. Well, Nate picked a fine time to hit a jump shot as the Suns had a little bit of momentum, but he stopped that right away, right at the end of the quarter. James Jones has not hit a shot yet in this game for the Suns. Well, it's not, well, it's turned fourth quarter. Exactly. exactly. He's come alive. Just about to say, all eight of his points against the Bulls came in the fourth quarter. Eddie House tips the pass out of bounds, and New York will have it. First minute to play in the fourth, and the headband is back for Eddie. Lost it momentarily there here in the fourth. Seemed to really perturb Eddie. Need your equipment. Well, he's perturbed because he got hit on the head, and it probably hurt. <laughs> Suns begin the fourth with Raja Bell, Boris Diaw, James Jones, Sean Marion, and Eddie House, and an offensive foul slapped on Maurice Taylor of the Knicks. Steve Nash, eight points, five assists in the third quarter for Phoenix. And Knicks' biggest lead has been 13 here tonight. It's a six-point advantage here into the fourth quarter. Eddie House off the bench with three hoops and another whistle, and this time, the makeup call, and it goes against Boris Diaw of Phoenix. I guess uh, that ref was bored. He hadn't blown his whistle in a while and just felt like he had to be a part of the game. <laughs> I don't really know what that call was all about. Pat Burke will this see. This is the NBA, Tom, by the way. They do allow a bit of contact. A little bit. Yeah. Here comes Pat Burke for the first time tonight here in New York, and Eddie Curry returns for the Knicks. You don't spend all that time in the weight room because you want to look good. I mean, at least I don't. <laughs> Doing your lunges so you get in the middle of the ice cream line. <laughs> that was Washington. That's when you were doing your lunges. Oh, yeah. That's true. Good point. Boris Diaw, five personal fouls, so he's on the Suns bench. Crawford sets up Curry, met at the top by Pat Burke. Met at the top by Burke, and good job of Jane Jones on the weak side grabbing that rebound. They're running. Raja Bell rings the bell, teeing up a three. Raja that in the zone. With AutoZone, $100 to Phoenix Suns Charities. After the three-pointer by Raja Bell, and the Suns now once again within three. Suns, one of the top three shot-blocking teams in the league. They have four. Back iron for Channing Fry. Rebound for Burke. Suns out there now with three reserves. House, Burke, and James Jones, along with starters Raja Bell and Sean Marion. Two minutes deep here into the fourth quarter. House, hand in the face from Nate Robinson. And devouring the rebound there, Jamal Crawford stops. 15-footer open, looking down it goes for Jamal Crawford. Tough jump shot there for House. Nate Robinson did a good job of putting a hand up. Got the rebound. Jamal Crawford, one of the better scorers on this team, came down and stopped and hit that 14-footer. You have to honor the possible drive, and then you pull back defensively, and Crawford sticks it. Sean Marion from the perimeter for Phoenix. And Marion's eighth field goal, 19 points for the Matrix to lead the Suns. Sean's got that jumper going here in the garden. Leading scorer tonight has been Jamal Crawford, who has 20. Channing Fry blowing up at the rim. That was a savage slam by the former St. Mary's Knight. What a fantastic play by the rookie. As they're going to come off the pick and roll by the two rookies. First, a good pass by Robinson and Pat Burke. Just too late. Nothing you can do there as Channing Fry. It's all the momentum. Takes one big step and just helpless. And Pat Burke just became somebody's poster. Mm. And to the line goes Channing Fry. Finishes off the three-point play. We go back and look at this game. If New York can hang on to win, you'll look at the rookie Nate Robinson, the three-pointer, end of the third quarter. And could that be a momentum builder for the Knicks? The Channing Fry vicious slam and three-point play. Marion left alone behind the line, too deep. Here come the Knicks working on their six-point lead. Fry wants it low block, draws a crowd, stripped clean. Roger Bell tips it up ahead to Eddie House and a foul in the backcourt on Marbury. Smart foul there by Marbury who knew the Suns would be on the run. Fry did everything right there, except for when he got the ball, he made the mistake of putting the ball on the ground, and the Suns got in there and 
Got the turnover, but you're right. All three rookies for the Knicks have played a big part in this game. Eighty-six, eighty Knicks here in the fourth. Tonight's heart-pumping moment brought to you by Banner Health. Go back to Channing Fry on the fly. Well, two rookies pick and roll, and right now Pat Burke is a little bit of trouble. Can't get over there to take the charge. Doesn't want to jump in underneath the rim, and nothing you do is Channing Fry goes up strong and slams it home. Yeah, Isaiah Thomas with some thorough research on Channing Fry before selecting him with the eighth. Overall pick in the first round, visiting Tucson restaurants and hangouts there in Tucson. No need. This is a quality kid. But sounds to me like a lame excuse to go hit the college bars. <laughs> Dan Marley has just put in his application as an NBA investigator. <laughs> what do you say? I'm saying the Knicks are up by six. 8.35 to go here in the fourth. And a foul down low on Pat Burke of the Suns. In comes Kurt Thomas along with Steve Nash for Phoenix. A dynamic duo in that third quarter. David Lee, Jamal Crawford, Eddie Curry, Channing Fry, and Marbury out there. Now for the Knicks. Marion in a switch covering his former teammate Marbury. Goes to help on Fry. Cross court Crawford jacks it up. And nearly jacked it in, goes out of bounds off of James Jones of Phoenix. Knicks will have it 8.17 to go here in the fourth, up by six. Channing Fry showing good poise there, got double teamed, turned around and made a cross-court pass to one of the better shooters on the Knicks team, Crawford. He missed it, but the Suns couldn't come away with the rebound. Marbury, Roger Bell didn't bite on the head fake, stays right with him, and Marbury still drills it right in the face of pressure from Roger Bell. It's about as good a defense as you can get. And still Marbury able to pump it in. Now has 19 points to go along with eight assists against his former team. Nash right down Main Street with the finger roll. Came off the pick and roll, got all the way to the lane. This whole trip, the Suns have found a way to close out in the fourth and win games. Let's see if they can do it here tonight. 740 and counting here in the fourth. They put it in the hands of Marbury. He'll fire again right on top of Roger Bell. Back-to-back -back buckets by the ever-confident Stephon Marbury. Well, ever-confident is right. Stephon trying to take this game over. He's going to say, you know what? So Phoenix wise should still be in Phoenix. And that statement, I'm the best point guard, trying to tell something. But I don't believe it. Not even close. Suns know exactly what he is capable of. And be shocked if they don't put it in his hands again. Here he comes off the screen. Marion there to help out. Baseline hangs in the air, looking for Fry. His pass tip, headed out of bounds. And going into the front row, Channing Fry. Who else was over there? There was a big skirmish well, there. Not only going in the front row, he ran over James, James Jones, Jones to get over there. I don't know exactly where Channing Fry was going. This was going off the Phoenix Suns. And watch him just run over James Jones trying to save that ball. It's actually going to be New York's ball anyway. Whoa. Well, that's a scary play there. James Jones headed for the stairs. Four seconds on the shot clock for the Knicks. Big possession. It's Marbury again. Front iron boarded by Kurt Thomas. Eight-point lead for New York. Do the Suns have the energy at the end of this five-game road trip for another comeback? Airmail. Nash to Marion. Well, Steve was looking that play the whole time. He wanted to give it to Sean early. It just never developed. He never took his eyes off him. And Stefan was trying there to guard Sean. And Steve just laid it up there. And Sean went up and finished. Nash now with 14 assists on the evening. Marion with 21 points. Curry hands it back to Marbury. On the prowl, Raja Bell. Head fake, draws the foul on Raja Bell. Whistled there by Tim Donahue, who earlier teed up Raja. Another brutal call as there was two seconds on the shot clock once again. Raja doing a good job of staying in between him and the basketball and just standing there. Oh, man. Stefan draws the contact, and that is just unforgivable when there's two seconds on the shot clock and you bail a guy out like that. The Knicks have been to the free throw line 24 times so far, 15 of 24. The Suns 
only six free throw attempts here tonight in New York, but it was the same story in the first meeting between these two teams. Suns went 40 minutes without shooting a free throw. The first meeting against New York back in Phoenix. Marbury, New York now up by eight. It just shows you a ref that probably hasn't played a stick of basketball <laughs> at all. I mean, because you just can't allow that to Nash sets up Boris Diaw, pumps it in from the outside. Another dish for Nash, and Boris Diaw now with 14 points, six of 10 from the field. Can the Suns get any closer, though, than the six points? Entertaining battle here tonight between a struggling Knicks team and the Suns come in nine games over 500 and a foul on the floor with 5.47 to go. And New York will have it when we come back, leading the Suns by six. Knicks by six still here in the fourth. Mr. Texas Hold'em, I have some royal flushes for you. Tonight's High Flyers presented by Southwest Airlines, official airline of the NBA. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of freedom. Raja Bell to Sean Marion with the flush. And that's Steve Nash to Boris Diaw. Dresman at the... And then Quintel Wood showing he's no dog. <laughs> and then Channing Fry big time. Welcome to the NBA. <laughs> Wax him, young fella. Yeah, he still hears about it from his rookie teammate, Nate Robinson, who dunked on Channing in a college game, Washington against U of A. Channing wasn't the only one Nate dunked on. Here come the Suns. Nash hangs in the air, gets it over to Marion, and hold on, a whistle and a foul in the lane. And that should send Sean Marion to the line. A couple of choices there on the break. For Nash, he was thinking about lobbing it up to Raja instead waited for Sean. Good defense, and then they got out run. Kurt Thomas with a beautiful outlet, and Steve Nash goes up in the air. Wanted Raja. Couldn't feel like he could get it to him, and gets it to Sean, and Sean knocks down the first free throw. And that is his first free throw of the night. Sends as a team with just seven attempts. And Stephon Marbury checking out now with 5.34 to go. And I wonder quarter. how he feels about that. I would love to have a little microphone a, over there. I think he just said, what? That's a perplex myself. Larry Brown brings in the rookie, Nate Robinson, in a four-point game after Marbury has been dominant here in the fourth period. Channing Fry, ugly shot rebound by Nate Robinson. Fresh 24. Larry Brown will let you know who's in control. Well, no wonder their relationship is rocky. <laughs> I mean, I would have, and I'm a pretty mild-mannered guy. I would have problems with that. Motivation that's by not fear. That's not, no. that's not motivation. <laughs> by power. That's just plain stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Neither does he. It's not like Stefan's pretty good. <laughs> oh, I would say. They were putting it in his hands and going to work on Raja Bell, one of the grittier defenders in the league. And 5.13 to go here in the fourth quarter. Raja Bell, by the way, has just fouled out after all the time tracking Stefan Marbury. Picks up number six, and he is done for the night. Check out the Arizona Sports Report on FSN Arizona nightly at 9.30 p.m. for interviews, game previews, highlights, and player profiles. The ASR gets you up close and personal with the Suns nightly at 9.30, only on I, FSN Arizona. How do you think Isaiah would handle it if he was playing well? They're up by five. The last couple minutes of the game and the coach sits you down. He'd go Ruben Patterson on it. 94-88, back to a six-point advantage. Nearing the five-minute mark here of the fourth quarter. Nash, before he hoisted up the three, a three-second violation defensively, I believe, here on New York. And that will result in a technical free toss by Steve Nash. Shanning Fry camped out there in the lane defensively. Here comes Nash coming into this game. Nash missed only six free throws in 124 attempts. He has missed once here tonight, has 18 points and 15 assists. He has pulled the Suns to within five. 
So the Suns now out there with Eddie House and Nash in the backcourt. Marion, Diaw, and Kurt Thomas. Marbury still on the Knicks bench. Rajabelle has fouled out of this one for Phoenix. Eddie House, straight and sweet for two for Eddie House. And if you're a New York Knick, I think the last person you want to leave open is Eddie House, especially in the fourth quarter. And another interesting move, move to me is Maurice Taylor comes in for Channing Frye. And Stefan Marbury hops up from the bench, gets the call from Larry Brown. So a very short rest for Stefan Marbury, I'm sure, to his liking. Offensive foul here. Mo Taylor in the Knicks, and the Suns will have it down by three. Once again, returning Stefan Marbury and his 23 points. So the foul here is Nate Robson looking to go off the screen, and Maurice Taylor just rolled before Eddie House was set, so good cause. It's called a moving pick, and Stefan Marbury back in the game, and rightly so. Suns come in 8-2 so far this season against Eastern Conference teams. Nash sets up Boris Diaw for three, back iron. Nash high in the air, trying to poke it out of the grasp of Eddie Curry, but the Knicks come away with the rebound. Let's see Boris step in just a little bit, a little bit about his range there. Marbury, free momentarily, now covered up by Eddie House. Wants to go to work on House. Diaw double team help. Marbury looking for a mate, it's David Lee, open on the baseline. Well, this kid sure has come of age, hit a few big jumpers, had a great first quarter, and that time Stefan shows enough confidence in him to give him a jump shot. 17 points now for David Lee, Marbury's ninth assist. Diaw to a wide open Marion, Suns need it, can't get it. Comes up short, and Nash couldn't corral the rebound. Three on one, Nick break, Jamal Crawford the distance. Timeout, Mike D'Antoni and the Suns. They may have run out of gas here tonight in New York. Well, the Suns get two wide open jump shots, but not from guys who are known as shooters. First, Boris Diaw, and then Sean Marion comes up short. Jamal Crawford gets the rebound, and they get out and run. Crawford takes it himself, goes all the way for the left hander. The mix up seven with 3.39 to go. Knicks by seven here in the fourth. Hey, Suns fans, why cheer on an empty stomach? McDonald's dollar menu is a slam dunk with a big and tasty sandwich sure to fill you up before the big game for just a buck at participating McDonald's. Dan Marley moments ago, potentially a five-point turnaround. Marion three-point attempt results in a fast-break opportunity for New York. Yeah, you know, the Suns get a good look. Steve Nash in there trying to get the rebound, which gives up no defensive balance. Nobody back but Eddie House, three-on-one fast break. Crawford lays it in. Nash into the front court for Phoenix. Madison Square Garden crowd is alive. Diaw, 15-footer left elbow, gets the bounce. And we have a five-point game. Set play for Sean Marion to get a lob, didn't work out. Again, you see House penetrating, and that time Boris Diaw more in his range, knocks it down. 16 points, six rebounds for Boris Diaw. Knicks in their half-court set. Crawford, Marbury, and Lee have been the offensive stars tonight for the Knicks. Eddie House puts a paw on it. Knock free up ahead. Who's it off of? Off of New York, Suns basketball. 2.55 to go. Suns are still breathing here in the fourth. Maybe there is just a little bit of gas left in that tank. I think that's some gas. Eddie House getting in the passing lane on the weak side, going for the break. Jamal Crawford knocks it out, and plenty of time as the Suns only down five. Mo Taylor injured over there in front of the Knicks bench on the previous possession. They already lost Antonio Davis to a back injury. Out goes Taylor. And Malik Rose has checked in. So the blood streaming from the eye of Mo Taylor. Bob feed Marion rises up. Couldn't finish. Beautiful play. Marion came up just a shy short. How was that practice when they ran that? And they ran it to perfection. Sean just happened to miss it. And Stefan comes down and misses the jump shot. Sean get corrals the rebound. Marion in double figures rebounding. Another double-double. 23 points, 10 rebounds. Still a five-point Knicks advantage. Nash to Diaw. In the corner, Marion. Same spot for three. Different result. Down it goes for the Matrix. In the zone with AutoZone. $100 at Suns Charities. Play set up by the Suns. Three playmakers. Nash to Boris to Sean. Two-point game. 2.15 and counting here in the fourth. Crawford curling. Met there by Kurt Thomas. 
David Lee whips it over to Marbury. Tracked by Nash. It's Crawford. Hacked and fouled there by Sean Marion. Three free throws coming for Jamal Crawford. Tough break for the Suns as Sean Marion trying to be aggressive. Getting out there, trying to put a hand in the face of Jamal Crawford. Ends up doing something you never want to do, and that's following a jump shooter. Crawford, you can go to the line and shoot three free throws. An 83% free throw shooter. He's hit all four free throws tonight. Where's number 11 in honor of Isaiah Thomas, who stuck his neck out to acquire Jamal Crawford in a sign and trade with the Bulls. And Crawford now with 23 points, tying Marbury for team high honors. Marion leading all scorers with 26. Crawford hits one of the first two. We'll have one more. Mike D'Antoni bellowing instructions to his son's players for the next offensive possession. Two of three for Jamal Crawford. The lead is four for the Knicks. Two minutes to go here from New York City. Suns trying to make it 5-0 on the road trip. Down by four. Here comes Diaw, fouled from behind before the shot. And the Suns will have it on the side. Nick still with one foul to give. Suns' last lead was 3-2 in the first quarter on Larry Brown and the Knicks. And we have a 20-second timeout here with a minute 53 to go, and it's an Inhale Life 20-second breather brought to you by the Arizona Department of Health Services that reminds you to inhale life and be tobacco-free. For information on how to quit smoking, call 800-556-6222 or visit ashline.org. So this is where Dan Tony's at his best off a of timeout, setting up a set play. So let's look for either House for a three or Steve Nash coming off a pick and roll or Sean Marion on the back cut going to the basket. Larry Brown and the Knicks break their huddle. Larry has certainly bounced around in his coaching career. Eighth NBA coaching stop for Larry Brown, who had the bladder surgery last season while with the Pistons, missed 17 games and says he'll need additional procedures, quite possibly, hoping to wait until after the season. Suns have it. Down by four. Nash spinning on Crawford, hangs in the air. Good look, good shot. Two-point game. Great shot as Nash curls into the lane and that little patented one foot leaner. 20 points, 15 assists for Nash. Suns need a stop. The former Sun Marbury against Nash. Can't connect. And a loose ball foul on Phoenix. Boy, doesn't get much better theater than that. Stephon Marbury traded to the New York Knicks, freeing up the money that the Suns used to sign Steve Nash. You can see here Nash is attacking Crawford, spins into the lane and opposite foot right over the rim and did a good job on the defensive end of keeping Stefan from getting to the basket, which we all know he wants to do, but Malik Rose earning some of that big contract to the offensive rebound. Minute 31 to go, Malik Rose nearly missed everything on that first free toss. He shoots 74% from the line. Seven and a half seasons with the Spurs winning two NBA titles. He knows something about pressure, but misses the first free throw. Here's the second. One of two for Rose. It's a three-point Knicks lead. Minute and a half to play here from the Garden. Jamal Crawford defending Nash. Kills the dribble, and now it's Marion. Back to Nash. Minute 15 to go. Count it! Or, no, before the shot by Steve Nash, a foul on the floor. But the Knicks in the penalty situation, and the NBA's top free throw shooter to the line. Trying to run in that pick and roll, and hasn't been able to get open. This, way, this time goes away from him. He gets fouled there and puts it on the floor one too many, but what a circus shot. Nash sticks the first one, making it a two-point game. Nate Robinson checks in now for New York, and he replaces Malik Rose. Nash, four of five free throw shooting as a team. The Suns, 80%, eight of 10. One of the top free throw shooting teams in the league. 
Larry Brown taking out Malik Rose, going with the three-guard rotation. Small lineup. And we have a one-point game. Look for Stefan to be coming off of picks, down low, catching, creating either for himself or somebody else. Suns with four fourth-quarter comebacks on this road trip. Are they queuing up number five? Crawford to the lane against Sean Marion, who's busted for the personal. And not happy about it. Sean Marion now has picked up his fifth personal foul. He has five along with Diao and Kurt Thomas. Raja Bell has already fouled out. Don't see much contact. And usually in NBA games, about a minute to go, you let the players decide it. Sean using that length, much like he did in Chicago, to stop them from getting that last shot. Crawford this time gets the call. Tissue, soft touch at the line for Jamal Crawford. Seven of eight from the line so far for Crawford tonight. One of two. Rebound to Kurt Thomas. Inside of a minute to go here in the fourth quarter. Knicks have been to the line 34 times here tonight. Nash for three. Too strong. Loose ball foul on David Lee and Sean Marion will go to the line for two. Nash got a real good look at him. Pick and roll wide open three and Sean Marion Goes up high, gets pushed by David Lee, gets a call, going to the line. You're going to see Nash coming off that pick and roll, lets it fire. Sean Marion going to come flying through. You see the push from behind, David Lee. Turning into a free throw shooting contest here in the fourth quarter. Marion pumps in the first. Took a scrape on the side of the head. It's been a very physical battle between the Knicks and Suns here tonight. Marion to tie the game. Circles in, and we are tied at 102. Final 45 seconds. Tremendous drama here from New York. Marion tracking Jamal Crawford. Pushing off on Marion. Leans, fades, loose rebound. Grabbed there by Nash. Here come the Suns on the run. Lays it up. Marion elevates and detonates with one hand. And the Suns lead by two. Time out, New York. Woo! Beautiful defense. Get the ball to Steve Nash. He made Stefan commit just enough. Threw it up and Sean went high in the rim and dunked it. What a beautiful job on both ends of the court by the Phoenix Suns. Steve Nash, no one better in open court. Throws it up. The Matrix! Suns up by two. 24 seconds left. 104-102 Phoenix, they're on a 13-4 run here in the fourth quarter. We're gonna look at this last transition, Steve Nash pushing it hard, makes Stefan commit just enough. He can't get back, and Sean Marion dunks it home for the lead, and I wonder if they're gonna keep going to Jamal Crawford to put it into uh, Stefan Marbury's hand one time. Knicks led 98-91 with 3.39 to go. Crawford. At the feet of Marbury, tracked by Nash, bounces into Nash, no whistle. Marion nearly had the rebound, here comes Marbury for three in the lead. Ball is loose, and we have a loose ball foul now on, I believe, Kurt Thomas of Phoenix. With 8.4 to go. And that is number six on Kurt Thomas. Diao, Raja Bell, and now Kurt Thomas have all fouled out of this game. Good defense by the Suns, and they just couldn't get those rebounds that they gave the Knicks three chances of shots. And now Curry is going to go to the line. Marbury giving Tim Donahue an earful. He felt he was fouled by Nash on the drive. And Curry only a 64% free throw shooter, so the Suns have to concentrate here and make sure they box out. Marion, Pat Burke with the inside position as Curry Ooh, hits the first one home. Oh. Box out and then plenty of time, eight seconds left. Curry to tie it up. Hits them both. Calmly, Eddie Curry deadlock now at 104. And a timeout with 8.4 seconds to go. Pitch that remote. We're back from New York with a tie ball game.
Deja Vu all over again. Mike D'Antoni very rarely calls a timeout in this situation, but three of his starters have fouled out, so he's diagramming a play. Steve Nash and Sean Marion teaming up for the big hoop in Chicago on New Year's Eve, sending the game to OT. Yeah, Steve Nash is penetrating five Sean for the layup, and we'd sure like to see that again, and this time it would send us home with the win without going to the OT, get on that plane and get home, and what a great gutty performance by the Suns here. Looked like they were out of it early and have just fought back. Nine-day road trip, some tough games, and gotta love these Phoenix Suns. Suns, no doubt, want to make sure they take the final shot here in regulation, not give New York an opportunity. And it will be James Jones to inbound for the Suns. Curling free is Nash. Defended by the rookie, Nate Robinson. Here we go, final five seconds. Regulation here in New York. Nash fires straight, but short. And we are going to overtime for the second straight game here on this road trip. You know, I think they waited a little bit too long there. Sean wasn't able to get a good screen on Nash's man. David Lee switched off. Nash had to shoot a fall away against a bigger player, but I'm not griping. <laughs> overtime when I thought we had a loss here tonight. Suns outscored the Bulls by nine in overtime in Chicago. The extra five-minute period coming up next on UPN 45. This will be the third overtime game for the Phoenix Suns this season. Suns and Knicks all tied up at 104. Eat fresh with Subway and the Suns. Subway will reward every fan at the Miami game on January 6th with a mystery scratch and win card. Prizes will include a variety of Subway menu items and a limited number of Suns replica jerseys. Every fan is a winner. For tickets, call 1-800-4-NBA-TICKS or visit suns.com go back to the final seconds of regulation suns put it in the hands of their mvp steve nash the switch david lee there defensively good look for nash came up just short and thus the five minute overtime period nash creating good space between himself and the rookie from florida So the Suns, with the smiles on their face, they were in trouble at the 339 mark, trailing this Knicks team by seven. But once again, for the fifth time in five games on the road trip, they rally in the fourth quarter. Oh, very gutty. And the reason I thought they should have won a little earlier, because you know the Knicks were probably going to switch, giving that would have gave Steve a little bit more time to go one on one against a mismatch. And, talked about a gutty performance we've got three starters who fouled out so we're gonna have to have some subs come in here and play well Morris Dial, Rajavel, Kurt Thomas all fouling out so it's James Jones, Eddie House and Pat Burke on the floor to begin overtime Marbury into the lane met there by Burke Nate Robinson finds Eddie Curry misses the jam and then stripped inside Eddie Curry too strong on the flush attempt Almost tore down the rim as he hit it off the front iron. Nate Robinson penetrating, bounce pass, and watch him try to tear down the rim. And Steve Nash. The Knicks have done a good job of getting up and getting second chances. And remember, if the Suns would have got those rebounds earlier, I mean, that may not be here, but this Nick team has continued to fight, and it's a team that's very desperate. Eddie Curry to the stripe. Hit two flush free throws in regulation. Yeah, Nails the first look one here. Smooth for a guy shooting 64%. Sure does. Shoots 53% from the field, mostly because of the inside post moves, though. Missing the jam just moments ago, and Curry, one of two, rebounded by Sean Marion. Marion, 30 points, 11 rebounds. Nash has 22 points, 16 assists. Talk about that, Dan Marley. This would be the guttiest of wins on the road trip if they can do it with three of their players having fouled out. Turn over there, Eddie House looking for Pat Burke. 
Marbury, head down, sets up David Lee. Hangs in the air. Bucket and one for David Lee. And the Knicks score the first three points here in overtime. David Lee can make it a 4-0 start. Marbury getting in the middle, finds David Lee, who's been very aggressive in another. Seems like a phantom call again. Didn't see any contact at all. 30th pick in the first round, the final selection of that first round, but David Lee misses the free throw. Knicks have had trouble at the line all night long. They have missed 14 free throws here tonight. Eddie House free for three. Strong and wide right, high above the crowd. David Lee. It was Sean Marion who scored the first six points in overtime in Chicago. Jamal Crawford, little pick and roll with Eddie Curry. Contact with James Jones and back to the line goes the one-time bull, Eddie Curry. Miscommunication from Pat Burke and Sean Marion there. Sean got caught up actually on Pat Burke. Nobody was able to pick up Curry. You see Sean trying to go underneath, runs right into Pat Burke, and nobody's there to pick up Curry. Come over the weak side too late. It's going to go to the line. Curry, who averaged 16 points a game last season with the Bulls, coming over here to New York. And here this evening, Curry in a starting role has nine points. He's just two of seven from the field and five of eight free throw shooting. Six rebounds for Curry as well. One of two for Curry. Nick still scoring the first four points here in OT. Suns shut out so far here in the extra period. Nash fires for three. Pat Burke there for the offensive rebound and the reset. House goes cross court to Marion on the drive. The floater, front iron. Suns still scrapping on the offensive glass. James Jones, bucket at one for Junior. Scrapping is right, getting some good looks. First Pat Burke with the offensive rebound, and James Jones showing some muscle down there. Not only gets the rebound, but powers it up through the defender and lays it in. Sean with the little runner misses. Nick's almost tipping in, but James Jones goes high up and a couple pump fakes and hooping the heart. First bucket of the night for James Jones. Knocks down the free throw, and the lead now is one. With the first three points here in overtime by Phoenix. Curry, bouncing into Jones, couldn't finish, tipping, and cleaning up there inside, Eddie Curry. Curry just getting too low on the block, has missed that first one, but is able to get the rebound and nail in, and Nash goes all the way to hoop. House again, passing up on the J to Marion for three. Absolutely, for the Matrix. Well, you never like to see House pass up a three, but in that instance, we're glad he did. He has been awesome on this road trip. Another $100 to Suns Charities from AutoZone. Deadlock now at 110. Each team with six points so far here in overtime. Two and a half minutes to play. Jamal Crawford, the direct hit. He now has 27. Back comes Eddie House. Fills it up for three. The big shot by Eddie House. And I've said this before, but that is a bad shot for 99% of the players in the league. But Eddie House, you just think it's going in. Suns take the lead in overtime. Crawford. Too strong, Eddie House with the rebound. Suns, 11 of 35, three-point shooting. There's number 12. Down it goes for Steve Nash. Nash has missed a few of those. That time came off the pick and roll as he just bumps Eddie House, and that time knocked it down. Back-to-back -back threes by the Suns. The howitzer, and then Stevie Wonder with the big shot. And the Suns lead by four, two minutes to go in OT. Nash drops it down in front, in front of all his friends here in the garden. Big time, Steve. Raining outside in New York City, purple rain inside. The Suns have jacked up 36 three-point attempts. The last two find the bottom. Eddie House and Nash. Well, you live and die by the jumper. House stops on a dime. Huge. And then Nash off the pick and roll from Pat Burke. Robinson goes under. Nothing but the bottom of the net. And now the Suns are up four. 25 points, 17 assists for Nash. Against 
least that gas gauge was broken when we checked it with 3.39 to go in regulation. Suns had plenty left here at the end of the road trip. Nate Robinson slicing in, and that is basket interference on Pat Burke of Phoenix. Give the hoop to Nate Robinson. Cleared out the side for Nate Robinson. Look, Eddie House all the way the back, all the way to the hole. I didn't think it was going to go on. Burke just a little bit too eager, knocked it off the rim. Suns have benefited from 15 missed free throws tonight by the Knicks. Lead by two. Robinson shadowing Steve Nash. Suns cough it up. Here comes Robinson. Look out. Lays it up and in. And we are tied at 116. And then it goes out of bounds. Suns will still have it. Minute 31 to go in OT. Dangerous pass by Pat Burke, but Nick's taking advantage of that turnover by Steve Nash, and Robinson goes all the way to the basket. He electrifying Nate Robinson. Pick and roll, Burke. And he is bludgeoned on his way to the hoop by David Lee. Pat Burke may have to make some baskets down the stretch if they continue to go with the pick and roll. They're really concentrating on Steve Nash. Left Burke wide open as he rolled down the basket to lane down to the basket. And again, if you are just joining us, the Suns have had three players foul out. Rajabel, Boris Diaw, and Kirk Thomas. A minute 24 to go here in OT. Burke calmly sinks the first one. I told you, Jamal Crawford wears number 11 to honor Isaiah Thomas. Pat Burke wears number 11 to honor his twin sons, Grayson and Sadler. And they are proud of daddy. Well, Pat Burke shot free throws extremely well here. It was only shot eight, but he's made seven of them this year. So no surprise, he steps up and knocks the boat down. Daddy's coming home, boys, after this one. Hopefully with a victory for the Suns. Robinson draws the call. Eddie House appeared stationary. Pat Burke was over there as well, and it's Burke who's hit with a foul, and he says, you've got to be kidding me. Look at the expression by Mike D'Antoni. You know, that's the same play they ran last time. Clear out the side for Robinson to isolate on the house. Burke gets over there. Good job of getting on the weak sides. Looks like wow. his hand straight up, and very rarely does a rookie get that kind of call. And it falls off for Nate Robinson. Miss number 16 here tonight for New York. Karma. One more for Nate Robinson. He hit a three-pointer in overtime at the buzzer to defeat the 76ers earlier this season. But he misses them both. Pokes it away from Marion. Suns will have it. Buck 12 to go. Phoenix up by two. <laughs> the hair out of place for Mike D'Antoni. Well, the Knicks have nobody to blame themselves. They've been just horrendous in the free throw line. Nash trying to free himself of Nate Robinson. And now in the switch, it's big Eddie Curry. Nash steps back, fires, front iron. Rebound devoured there by David Lee. Another board for Lee. And now has tied his career high with a dozen. Marbury's been quiet offensively. Late in the fourth and here in OT. Marbury's still with the 23 points. Crawford, runner in the lane for Jamal Crawford. We are tied up again. Marbury's been quiet ever since he was taken out of the game at the five minute mark of the fourth quarter. Dash, on the dash, Eddie House, pump fake, rising up, no. Look at that one. 20 seconds to go. The Knicks can take the final shot here in overtime. Larry Brown calling out the play. Crawford looks over at Larry Brown. Now running the set. Five seconds and counting here in overtime. Tie ball game. Crawford. Back iron. We are going to a second overtime in New York City. Dan, we're not going home yet, pal. They're going to make the Suns work for this one. Wow, what a game. Eddie House with this miss, and then Sean Marion, good job defensively on Crawford, making him take a tough jump shot with a hand in the face, and on to our second overtime, Tom. Are we ever going home? 
118, 118, another five minute overtime period here from the Garden, coming up next. Headed to a second overtime here in New York. 118, 118. Sons and Knicks and Jamal Crawford had a chance to win it for New York. Couldn't get the shot. Save $30 off single game pricing with the Suns. Six game packs. Choose from two great packs, both featuring marquee matchups with defending NBA champion San Antonio Spurs to pick up your six game pack full of high flying Suns fun. Call 602 379 Suns or visit. Suns.com with director Dan Siegman, producer Bob Adlock, Tom Leander, and Dan Marley here with you from New York. Let's go back over the final possession. Well, here's Crawford who likes to take that final shot for the Knicks. Gets Sean Marion going to the basket, stops and shoots that runner with success to tie up the game. And this time Sean doesn't commit them. Oh, same shot, I guess. <laughs> I led, the runner and that goes I led in. you down a dark alley. No, that's Sorry. all right. It yeah. was kind of the same play where he stopped, and Sean did a better job the second time of making Crawford stop to shoot that jump shot with a hand in the face. And oh, it's been nothing but exciting. My question to you is what's happened to that man? Stephon Marbury had the 23 points. He was Larry Browned. <laughs> the brown cloud descending over Marbury. Well, you take him out, and yep. then, you know, he obviously distressed him. Offset about that, and yeah. then they put the ball in the hands of Nate Robinson two times in a row when Stephon Marbury probably thought he should have got it. Looks like he's lost interest, much like what happened in the game against Orlando when he's 0-7 from the field. James Jones buries it for two. Another, another game, another assist by Nash. He now has 18, second bucket for James Jones. And I like what Dan Tony did there. He went with a pick and roll with Sean Marion instead of Pat Burke, which gives the Suns another option. Better late than never, Mr. Jones. Lee feeds Curry inside, met at the top, and hammered by Pat Burke. Well, Strong I like, foul. I like that foul by Pat Burke sending Curry to the line, and I also like what David Lee did. He's shown himself to be a really good player here as he caught the ball in just a touch pass to Curry. And we like to see this of Pat Burke not giving any easy ones. Pat Burke now has picked up his fifth personal foul. Marion has five. They've already had three players foul out. The hack a minute man, Burke, eight minutes of play, five fouls. Another missed free throw by New York. This is a tough jumper. I mean, James has been struggling on this road trip except for the fourth period and overtimes, and there just caught it and jumped and fired and got the bottom of the net. And now the Suns are up by one. 18 missed free throws by the Knicks, 27 of 45 from the line. The Suns have hoisted up. 37 three-point attempts connected on 12. Good look for Burke along the baseline. Back iron. And it looked like it went off of David Lee quite possibly there, but they'll give it to the Knicks. Do these refs have a summer home in Manhattan or wherever? <laughs> I mean, here's been some in questionable the, In the Hamptons with Coach Brown. Are you calling conspiracy? Summer house. You're not calling conspiracy. No. Nope. Suns by one. Minute deep into overtime number two. Robinson crisscrossing on Eddie House. Curry offensive rebound. Back up goes Curry and back to the line goes Eddie Curry. The rookie Nate Robinson doing a good job of getting to the rim. Hasn't been able to finish, but the big fella Curry's been pounding those offensive rebounds. Once again, the isolation on Eddie House. Robinson crosses him over. Burke doing a good job of cutting him off, which leaves Curry wide open for the offensive rebound. You look at that deal between the Bulls and the Knicks. Eddie Curry coming over here from Chicago and the Bulls acquiring Michael Sweetney who did not even play in that game against the Suns. Scott Skiles felt the matchup problem for Sweetney out there with the run and gun Suns and Tim Thomas was also sent to Chicago but he's not even with the Bulls team. Skiles saying he doesn't even fit in. One of two for Eddie Curry. Tied up at 120. Hope you're enjoying this one. First game of 2006 for the Phoenix Suns, and it's gone into a double overtime affair. Down it goes for three. Steve Nash with the big shot. And that's what you get when you put Sean Marion into the pick and roll. They have to really concentrate on Sean. They went underneath that time, and Steve popped the three. Another $100 to Suns Charities. 
from AutoZone. They've actually dished out now $1,300 with 13 made three-pointers and another very questionable call. This one whistled against Nash, and Nash has five personal fouls. Well, you know what makes it interesting and the questionable call is Stefan's really not going anywhere right here. You know, he's just kind of backing Steve up a little bit, not really making any strong move, and that's just a a phantom call. I mean, I don't understand it. Nash, Marion, and Burke with five personal fouls. Arch Deluxe by Marbury. Ooh. Loose ball foul. <laughs> Mike D'Antoni, he's ready to head home right now. He's seen enough. He has seen enough. The same official who made the call on Nash makes that call. What more can the Suns team attempt to overcome? The problem is the Knicks are getting such great penetration, getting to the basket that the weak side of the Suns are coming over trying to help, which leaves the weak side Knicks on the offensive rebound. That's four personals on James Jones. This game goes into a third overtime. Suns may have nobody left. John Thompson there on the bench has not seen any duty. Jim Jackson has played 12 minutes here so far tonight. And another missed free throw by New York. Suns lead is two. Nash hit the three, and then a free throw by the Knicks, making it the two-point game. Three, ten, and counting in the second overtime. Marion on the move. Rebounded by Eddie Curry. Marion tonight, 12 of 22 from the field, 33 points and 13 rebounds. Marbury looks interested again, drops the shoulder on Burke, and Pat Burke is fouled out. Bucket is good by Marbury. Is it House? Yeah. Oh, they call it on Eddie House. Eddie House tried to come down on the side and reach in, try to get the hand on the ball. Marbury reached in and got some of the arm as Stefan finally is aggressive and takes it to the basket. Jeez. And then Marbury misses at the line. Ball knocked free, and the Suns finally get a call. That was a missed call there. But the Suns will take it. Tied at 123. The Knicks shooting a woeful 58% from the free throw. 21 misses and counting. Been to the line 50 times. What is left in these weary legs for Phoenix? Marion rising up and connects. Marion now with 35. The Suns lead is two. Pick and roll again, Dunn wanting Steve to take the jump shot. Bounce pass to Sean Mary. Nobody in the league can finish around that basket. Once again, great theater here from New York. Suns and Knicks in a classic. Robinson spins, finds Eddie Curry for the crush. Nice setup there by the rookie, Nate Robinson. Just isolating Eddie House. Pat Burke goes over, tries to stop him. The rookie finds Curry. Nash wants three. Rebound, out of bounds, give it to New York. Nash, 10 of 23 shooting, 28 points, 19 assists. Uh, D'Antoni just made the change, put Sean Marion on Nate Robinson, thinking he may want to isolate him again. Now they're going to Stefan and Steve. Crossing over on Nash, tries to draw the contact, tipping at the glass, Eddie Curry. Curry has killed us on the offensive board. He is a beast inside. Nash to Ty. Burke trying to keep it alive. And he'll give it to Phoenix with a minute 39 to go. Suns down by two. And that was all Pat Burke hustling, gets his hand on the ball, enables the Suns to get a second chance. And now D'Antoni's going to take a timeout. And we will take it with him. 139 to go in overtime. New York 127. Suns 125. Back here in New York. Second overtime. Suns and Knicks tied up at 127. Take a look at the foul difficulty for the Phoenix Suns. Three players have fouled out of this game, and three more have five. Diaw, Kurt Thomas, Raja Bell, out of the game, Marion Nash and Burke with five. Eddie Curry has been dominating on the glass, has six offensive rebounds so far, 13 on the night. He and the rookie David Lee have combined for 26 boards. 
for all the rookies. You know, Nate Robinson do a good job of not only making passes, but getting to the basket, allowing Curry to be open for those offensive rebounds. New York Knicks. Not playing like a 7-21 and 21 Is the score 127, 127, or 127, 125? Because the scoreboard here says 127, 125. It's 127, 125. There we go. 127, 125. Knicks by two in overtime. Nash over to Eddie House. From the outside, pumps it in for two. And a beautiful set play as Nash came off the pick and roll. And they set a back screen for Eddie House, who calmly nails the jumper. Now we got a tie ball game. There's the tie. Sorry about the confusion. 127, 127. And here's Marbury and the Knicks. Marion talking to Marbury. Throws it off the glass. Here come the Suns. Chance to take the lead. Two on one. Marion. Nash traveled before the pass. Indecision by Steve Nash. You rarely see that. Crawford did an excellent job of feigning like he was going to guard Steve. And then all of a sudden goes back. And Steve got caught in the air and caused the travel. And then turns his ankle as he steps on Crawford's leg. You're right, though. You hardly ever see Nash making a mistake on a break. 105 and counting here in the second overtime. 127, 127. Marbury kills the dribble. Back iron. James Jones is there. Excellent position for that board by Junior. Suns again with a chance to take the lead. Nash now pulls it back on Nate Robinson. Pat Burke for two. Couldn't get it to rebound to Eddie Curry. Now it's the Knicks' turn. Well, Steve couldn't shake anybody there, and obviously that's not the shot the Suns needed. Nine seconds left on the shot clock. Suns get a stop. They're going to have plenty of time to get their own shot up. It's Crawford driving on Nash. Too strong off the glass. Another rebound for James Jones. Here come the Suns. No timeout for D'Antoni. And now, wait, they will call the T.O. Eddie House was heading up the floor. And once again, D'Antoni, with all the players who have fouled out, will diagram a play from the sidelines. And we will take another timeout. 127, 127. Suns with the ball, nine seconds to go in the second OT. Mike D'Antoni setting up the final play here in the second overtime with the game tied at 127. Tom Leander back with Dan Marley and quite a free throw disparity here this evening between the Suns and the Knicks. Well, you got the Knicks who go to the line the most in the league and the Suns who go to the line the least in the league, but that's a big difference. <laughs> 21 misses for New York. You know, the Suns better win this game because they may not have enough bodies left if this goes three overtime. They may start dropping here at the broadcast booth. <laughs> the end of a long road trip. But it's been a sweet one for the Suns taking the first four. Can they eke out number five? Another fourth quarter flurry by the Suns in this one, trailing by seven. 3.39 to go in the fourth quarter. We saw this before, Tom, where the Suns had a shot at the last second. We need Steve Nash to go off this pick and roll. They decide to go pick and roll a little bit earlier. So if they do switch, he has some time to create, not only for himself, but somebody else. So what does Mike D'Antoni have up his sleeve here in the second overtime? Eddie House to inbound for Phoenix. To Nash, suffocated and fouled immediately by Nate Robinson. New York had the foul to give. 8.4 to go in the second OT. The Suns have to be sure they get this inbounds in as Nate Robinson, I'm sure, with his quickness is going to try to get a steal. Knowing that Steve Nash will get the ball. Back into the hands of Nash. Five seconds. It's David Lee covering Nash again. Over to Pat Burke for the win. Oh! Mike D'Antoni and the Suns trying to shock the world by getting Pat Burke along the baseline. Had a good look, but it would not fall. It's too bad. What a chance for Burke to be the hero. Do you have five more minutes in you, Dan? No! Well, you're not going anywhere, pal. Neither are the Suns. Headed to another overtime.
They're going to have to re de ice the plane. Third OT upcoming from New York. We have had three attempts at game winning hoops. Nash couldn't connect, neither could Jamal Crawford for the Knicks. And then it was Pat Burke's turn. Pat Burke? Pat Burke coming off the screen and roll. Got the switch. Steve tries to penetrate. He does a good job. And Curry steps down, defending Nash to get to the basket, leaving Pat Burke a chance to be the hero. Front rim. The road trip that would never end. Heading to a third overtime here in New York, where the Knicks come in having lost 10 of their last 11. Suns thought it was going to be 11 of 12. They thought Burke was dialed in on that one. Raja Bell, Boris Diaw, Kurt Thomas fouling out. We told you three other Suns, including those two, have five personals. Nash, Burke, and Marion. I think Amari Stoudemire brought a uniform along, just in case. Don't even think about it. No. <laughs> dapper, dapper stat. Dig the hanky. I know, I see, I see uh, Dijon Thompson over there stretching out. He's <laughs> got an inkling he may get into this one. So we are up, up, and away in overtime number three. Marion, House, Jones, Burke, and Nash. Spin lob, Eddie Curry, and it falls. Boy, has he come alive in the overtimes. Well, set play set up by Larry Brown there. They're going to go to the post. Suns overplayed him. Curry with the spin move. James Jones tries to get over it from the weak side, but just too much strength for Curry to finish his job. And going to the free throw line where the Knicks have been brutal. The soft roll for Eddie Curry, who now has 20 points and 14 rebounds. They've also got 20 points and 13 boards from their rookie David Lee. Tracking Marion, floats it up, floats it in. Marion now has 37 for Phoenix. Nash with 28. Boris Diaw fouling out with 16. Eddie House 14 off the bench. Nowhere to go for Marbury, and now it's David Lee. And Pat Burke has fouled out. Another three-point attempt for the Knicks here in the third overtime. And here comes Jim Jackson. Clear out for Stephon Mar Marbury, gets to the middle, finds Lee, who for a rookie has been very aggressive, taking the ball to the basket, sees Stephon take Sean to the middle. Nowhere to go, finds the rookie. He just jumps into the fray, and Pat Burke picks up his sixth foul, and Jim Jackson steps in. Curry with the three-point play. And now it's David Lee's turn as Eddie House came over. A little conversation with Dan Marley. What is Eddie House talking about? Said it's been five on eight tonight, referring to the <laughs> poor refereeing oh. job by the uh -oh. three officials. He can't tonight. be fined for that. He didn't really say it to anybody in particular. No, it was that just was, that's between a third two person. friends. Yeah, it's a third-person thing. 133-129. Marion rolls and goes Gervin in the lane. The finger roll. No answer for Sean Marion at pick and roll. Steve Nash. Again, draws the double team and gets it to Marion right in the lane. 39 points now for the Matrix, Sean Marion. And that is his new career high. Sean's previous career high was 38. Traveling violation, David Lee. And getting set to check in, or at least to Attempt to check in, Quintel Woods. You know who we haven't seen in a while is Channing Fry. He's been planted on Larry Brown's bench throughout the overtime periods. And now Larry Brown still trying to get Quintel Woods into the lineup. Jim Jackson out there now for Phoenix. Four players having fouled out. Now into overtime number three. Jim Jackson thought about the three, gets it over to James Jones. He'll pump up the big shot. And the rebound to Jamal Crawford. 
Jim actually had an open shot there, but not having played a whole lot in this game, decided to give it over James Jones. He's been able to hit a lot of big shots for the Suns, just not that time. And Larry Brown's trying to get a smaller lineup in here as the Suns have been going very small since Pat Burke called out. Knicks out rebounding the Suns by nine. There's Nate Robinson back iron. David Lee hustles for the offensive board. And now it's Marbury through the obstacle course. Pops out. Nash devours the rebound. Marion thought about the three, bails out to James Jones, draws the contact, no foul on Eddie Curry. Curry looked like a heavyweight boxer, KO'd his opponent. Arch Deluxe there in the lane from Stephon Marbury. Now has 27 for the Knicks to go along with 10 assists. New York by four here in the third overtime. Nash, weary legs on that shot. Remember, he also injured his hand in that Bulls game. But playing with the 28 points, Nash has 21 assists in this game. And the hammer job there by Jim Jackson. And that will send Stephon Marbury to the line. You see here Stephon just taking it to Jim Jackson, gets all the way in, and Jim hacks down on him, gets the foul, and the Suns look tired, but you know what, who could blame him? Told you that Marion has a career high 39 points, Nash now a career high in assists with 21. Do the Suns have any juice left here in the third overtime? We're back after this. This game tipped off at 7.39 New York time. It is now 10.36, nearing the three-hour mark of this ball game for the Suns playing their fifth game in eight nights, closing out the road trip. Here against the Knicks, four players have fouled out. 2.06 to go on the third over. Maybe longer than the Fiesta Bowl. <laughs> D'Antoni calling the timeout. And a breather opportunity for Sean Marion and company. Marion, who was averaging over 41 minutes a game on this road trip, piling up the minutes here as well. He has played 58 minutes. Steve Nash has played 54 minutes in this game. A lot of sleeping going on on the flight home. Mm. And to the line will go Stephon Marbury. 28 points now for Marbury. Actually worked out with the Phoenix Suns and some of their players on the practice court before the season. And here is Steph, one of two, over the top, Quintel Woods, over the top of James Jones. Again, another sign of weariness there. Marbury and the Knicks in possession. Inside of two minutes to go here in the third OT. This is where, like in hockey, where you get partial credit for at least a tie or a point. Someone's got to receive some sort of credit for sending this game into a third overtime. Marbury and the Knicks starting to take control now. Minute 40 to go, up by seven. One heck of an effort by the Suns here in New York. James Jones. His miss boarded by David Lee. He's jerked down 15 boards. Yeah, you're right, a gutty effort by all the Suns players here, but it looks like, looks like maybe time is gonna run out on this Phoenix Suns team. They need a big stop here, but can't fault their effort here tonight. Looked early like they were gonna get it done, but fought the whole time. Marbury and the Knicks, now by nine. Jim Jackson's sons could use it and get it. That was a two-pointer, ending a 9-0 Knicks run. Two-point hoop for Jim Jackson. He's hit four shots here, nine points off the Suns' bench. Marbury pulls up from 18 feet. Wide left, tipping there, Quintel Woods, tipped away by James Jones. Seven-point game. 
Eddie House comes up short. And the rebound to Quintel Woods. That was the Suns' last opportunity here tonight. Even Mike D'Antoni can feel it. Nash will never stop competing. Here comes Crawford, stripped by Jackson. Final 10 seconds, Marion for three. And the rebound to Nate Robinson, and that will do it here from New York. A gallant effort by the Phoenix Suns, but they come up short in three overtimes. They win four or five on the road trip. And his guard crown finally something to cheer about if they see their Knicks win a gutty win against a very good Phoenix Suns team. Nate Robinson was on the floor now being lifted up by his teammates absolutely exhausted like the Phoenix Suns team. Suns fall to 19 and 11 on the season. Four and one on the road trip. They head back to Phoenix for three straight. When they host the Sixers on Wednesday, then it's the Heat and San Antonio Spurs. Back with our player of the game and Suns report coming up next.